What is going on, everybody? It is episode 581 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and sadly, Mary is not here today, but I have two fantastic guest hosts with me. To my left, would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains. How are you doing? Um, and, uh, whoa. And, uh, and Berman. What's up, guys? I'm a writer for Scanner News. How's it going, guys? Okay, I'm still not... I, I was going to put in the description box, like, Scanner News, but didn't because I didn't know what the... Web. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Tim Cast He News, only works not... in the exact same building. Literally, I was like... I was like, I was like... I was on... I don't remember. I was like some... Whenever the last time I went on IRL was, which doesn't happen that often anymore, and, and Hannah Claire was like, Scanner News? I'm like, what the... It's like, what the hell is that? Yeah. I've never heard of that. What the hell is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, no, I, no, I had no idea what they're talking about, but it's the same thing, right? Pretty yeah. much, yeah. yeah. Uh, write anything interesting today? Uh, what did I write about today? Man, I got... <sighs> I know the feeling, bro. Yeah. Well, I, see, I do a lot of my work later at night because yeah. I'm a night person and then I wake up late. Mm -hmm. So I, I wrote everything at like three in the morning. I don't remember what I wrote. It's uh, when people talk about, like, what did you guys talk about on the show today? I'm like, bro, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> oh, Trans Day of the Re Re Revengeance thing. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. Day of Vengeance. Yeah, yeah, it was the press secretary. She was saying that, oh, if you're critical of it, um, you're, a bad you're a right wing per I don't know, something stupid about yeah. that. Yeah. I don't care what they call me anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, there you go. That's, that's, that's fairly interesting. That's, that's something to write about. Yeah. How, how, how many, like, what, you write, like, in the middle of the night? Uh, it kind of depends. Sometimes it'll be like 10 o'clock at night, other times 3 in the morning. Okay. That's usually like my window of when I get a lot of my work done. That's, I would love for this show to be done <laughs> at 10 o'clock at night. I would I would love for this show to be from 10 to midnight. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I mean... It would be impossible to get people to come guest on it, but I would love to, to do this show at 10 o'clock at mm -hmm. night. That would... Not me. For in, for in studio, that's that's rough, right? So, some people might want to do that if they are... Uh, like if, they, if it was doing like... Um, like like stream yard links so that people could just tag in and out and want to but no uh like the problem is that this show is at like three in the afternoon so a lot of people they're like crashing yeah. at that point like, they're like they need a sugar high yes like, exactly someone needs a snack to exactly. get through the afternoon you gotta drink that one dollar energy there you go I was posting there about earlier <laughs> uh i drank a, uh i drank about two sips of this one dollar energy drink that i got at a, a dollar general it was the most disgusting thing i've ever tasted in my entire life it tasted like a crushed up pill that wasn't designed to be swallowed like it wasn't designed to be actually eaten like it's actually designed to just be taken normally it's disgusting don't do that uh guys we got a bunch of stuff to get into today but before we do would you please hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed here yet already i see many of you have made it back after uh april fool's day yesterday so thank you so much for bearing with us Remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those Super Chats right then and there, and then we will do our very best to get back on topic. Perhaps you have questions, comments, or concerns for either Bertman or for Phil. So uh, also share these videos with your friends. The more people that come in here and hang out and check this show out live, the wider our reach is. So thank you so much for sharing these videos with everybody. What are we going to talk about today? It's going to be interesting. So... Yesterday I mentioned that Shakira had like, it wasn't even a tweet from Shakira. She had an article in Allure, and believe it or not, I don't read Allure, so I had to wait for this to come out on Twitter, where basically she criticized the Barbie movie because she has sons and says that they found the movie emasculating. And of course, feminists are pissed about this, which is interesting because I thought the whole point of movies and stuff was that everyone can kind of take from it what they want, but apparently not. So we're gonna discuss that. We're also gonna talk about JK Rowling, who has dared to take on the Scottish government, kind of like a game of chicken with this new hate speech law that they just enacted. Uh, and it looks like the Scottish government blinked first. So we're going to get into that. We got a $20 oh, one. Go, when you want to go ahead and um, From Mikey, how's it going, everyone? Hope you all had a good last few days. I've got a question for Phil. Who's the best singer for the 2020s? I'm looking for recommendations. Uh, I, well, I don't know if you're talking about metal singer or if you're talking about um, just singer overall. Um, so I'm not really sure. If you're talking about like screams and stuff, like Alex from uh, Slaughter to Prevail has a cool death metal scream. Um, but I mean, it all, it all depends on what you're talking about. So. What's interesting is like, I, I hate those types of questions where somebody asks for a recommendation because I can never give it to you in the moment for whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If I'm just, if I'm giving you my unsolicited recommendations, I can give you great recommendations for whatever you want. But when somebody says, hey, what would you recommend I do with this? I'm like, ah, no idea, bro, <laughs> you just put me on the spot here. So, uh, and thank you, Mikey, for that. Thank you Thanks, so much. Yeah. Uh, also, okay, what else? So, I found this study that says that Gen Z is the, is that you, buddy? 
Maybe we're good. Gen Z <laughs> is the loneliest generation. Now, uh, what year were you born? Ninety-two. So you're Gen 30. Z. Uh, no. Edge of, uh, end of millennial, right? I'm like middle. Middle of millennial? millennial yeah. It's like okay. 85 to oh, 95 said, or something yeah, 92, like that. 92. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You're, you're a millennial. Yeah. So we're going to have to look at the study and figure out, because we get uh, two millennials and a Gen Xer here. We're going to have to figure out why it is that Gen, that Gen Z is so damn lonely. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Toxic Games Rating System, which is a, a brand new website that's going to help you figure out which what games, games you should to go buy. Out spend money on. <laughs> <laughs> That Where you want to send your dollars. That wasn't the intention, but that's going to end up being what it ends up doing, right? So we'll get into that. We get a bunch of other stuff. So again, guys, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Uh, Tacti Platty for $20 says, Brett, I'd like to request the People's Joker because Bert would suffer. Sorry, fam. Let it play. <sighs> you've, been submitted, you've been put through this already, haven't you? I don't I, appreciate that. Tacti Platty has personally put me through this. Yes, so then, um, that's I've fine. I've seen it. He's trying to bully me again. He always bullies me on Twitter, and uh, I would like his account banned. Because <laughs> he disagrees okay. with you. Yes, he disagrees with me. Tell them. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Shout out to Tacti Platty. <laughs> Uh, we got, and sorry, Anderson. if he's already seen it, Tacti, it does not serve a purpose to, to show it to him again. <laughs> That's just cruel at that point. And then one more from Corey Anderson. Corey Anderson uh, says, YouTube won't allow me to make super chats about illegals or Hillary Clinton. Bullshit. I've taken a handful of gabapentin. Gabapentin. Gabapentin and Percocet. Let's go, boys, 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 Jesus. boys, boys. Mary, I hope you feel better. We all miss you. Well, you know, at least he managed to get that part out. Bro, the, the Gabapentin <laughs> and the Percocet will do that to you. Be very careful. Yeah, be, uh, be, be, uh, take it easy with that, homie. Uh, it, it is. Uh, come to think of it, that's kind of what that energy drink tastes like. It would be like chewing Gabapentin. Don't do it, guys. Is Don't. it like Flintstones vitamins? No, no, Flintstone like vitamins. Flintstones vitamins. I used to pop those things. <laughs> this is, uh, this is <laughs> totally different. This is like one of these, like, because some vitamins are chewable. So yeah. you, that, that's different, right? If it's not chewable, it's not supposed to taste good. And that's what that energy drink tastes like. Like, hey, what could taste so awful nobody will ever drink this again? And that's what it tasted like. It was, it was disgusting. All right, guys, if you are ready, then we will go ahead and get right into it. Phil, you ready? Let's go. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, first things first, we got the very first poster for the upcoming Joker sequel, Folia Do, which does come out on 1024 of this year. So, what's that? Uh, October of this year. Yeah. That's good. I'm uh, not looking forward to it, and I'll tell you why. I've said this before. The problem is, is now the media is all in for this movie, and it was only cool to see the first one because the media hated it and wanted it to fail. I didn't like that Joker movie. I know that there are a lot of people that liked it. I didn't. I didn't find that Joker compelling. Yeah. I didn't find him scary. Like I, I think know it's supposed that, to be more like um, sad, turn like pathetic becomes. Which doesn't see like I yeah. get the I get the ag the angle, um, but I I didn't like it. Yeah. It didn't it, like I I and maybe it's because I've. I've got Heath Ledger's Joker imprinted in my brain, and that's yeah. kind of like what I think the Joker should be. I think that was really what really embodied the Joker the best. Um, I did see but. that this song, this movie's going to have 15 different songs in it, so it's not just a musical. It's like Oh, musical God, it's like through. cancer. Yes. <laughs> All right. Look, I, I think it, it, could be, no, it could be cool if they only do music when they're killing people. Like if they're only singing okay. while they're while they're being violent, there is yeah. the, the potential for something cool there. <clears throat> if I have to listen to him going through therapy and singing, I might walk out. I don't know if I actually want to see that. I don't want I to have... see the Joker working through mommy issues and daddy issues. I mean, he's not supposed to have because he's not supposed to be known in that in that way. There hasn't been a movie that I've seen like a preview for that I've been interested in seeing and maybe seven eight years did now. You see the, did, you, did you see the trailer for uh, Civil War? The Alex Garland movie that's coming out. That one out. looks interesting. No. Mm. Um, I mean, it makes journalists look cool, so I'm not a huge fan of that. You know? Oh yeah, that's the one where um, <laughs> you know, where there's a dude that's got the painted fingernails behind a sniper rifle in the in the. Uh, yes. Does he? Correct. There's a guy with painted yeah. fingernails behind a sniper oh rifle, God. and not really. I mean, I it didn't. It, I, no, I, I don't. And really bad trigger discipline from the other guy. Yeah. In the, in the, the, I mean, the thing that I'm thinking is like the perspective that I the vibe that I get it's like all right so there's the two parts of the country that have separated and stuff and it's like the government's like the authoritarian government but like you know that the media they when they're in the trailer when they said in Washington they shoot the media on sight I'm like well there you go the media are the heroes and that means that I'm going to hate the movie exactly that was the, <laughs> you know? when they said yeah. that it valorizes like, journalists I was like I don't really have much interest in seeing and, it and I know that this probably speaks a little bit to my age and stuff but 
I missed like one of the things that I really like about the eighties movies and the seventies and eighties and stuff like that. The government and the and the 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 state was always the bad guy. Yep. They were always the or ones that are Wolverines. Like, or well, I foreign mean, adversaries, <laughs> or foreign which would allow you to coalesce around the idea that other countries were the bad guy. Yeah, kind but of like, like in WWE, you have the the evil foreigner. That was like a yes, whole trope. Yes, mm-hmm. but you look at but like you look at First Blood. Yep. You know, obviously the the small town cops were the bad guys, but it was still the government that was the bad guys. Right. Um, you look at obviously Rambo. You look at uh, Ghostbusters. It was the it was the the the, yeah. the regulator coming in to yeah. shut them down and stuff like that. It was like there was always the authority mm-hmm. was the bad guy, and then the kind of the the irreverent you know, go their own way guy was the guy that was the good guy. And that's whether that's the Duke standing of Hazards or, the or exactly, exactly standing exactly. up to the, that was something that was ubiquitous in movies all the time. Standing up to the man. It's not anymore. Nope. It's not yeah. at all. What's yeah. funny is I saw this going around in television shows for the last couple of decades. So what it would be is like, uh, they would defer to the next agency up, which would be like, if it was a show about local cops, they hate the feds. Mm-hmm. But then the feds would always come in to save the day if they needed a, a case solved, that was something outside of their purview. And I was like, no, nah, stick it to the man. Tell him, <laughs> tell him to piss off. Uh, there's a $20 one there from Daniel J. What is that? Corica. So, you you want to read that one? It's it's yelling because it's in all caps. So it might be you to read it. Where is it? All right. Where is it now? Daniel Cor. All right. I can't stand. I know you planned it. I'm going to sit straight this Watergate. I can't stand rocking when I'm in here because your crystal ball ain't so crystal clear. So while you sit back and wonder why Phil rocks. Thank you very much. And I love Sabotage. That song yes. is great. I love Beastie the Boys. Beastie Boys. Yep. It is. And it's perfect for someone, again, my age, because I'm a, I'm a Gen X and the Beastie Boys are definitely a Gen X kind of staple. So. Uh, great music videos to Absolutely. go back and rewatch. Awesome. Like yeah. One of the great things was music videos like... Uh, ha- like, I love looking at the eras of music videos, whether it's the 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 whether it's the hip hop stuff from the '90s, which I'm a very big fan of, or even into the early 2000s and stuff like that, and then seeing how they've evolved over the years. Mm-hmm. Because music videos ended up just becoming now a lot of days they're they're just mini movies that they've been turned yeah. into in a lot of ways. So it's interesting to go back and look at some of those old ones. So yeah, I don't have any true interest in seeing this, but the Joker movie was a huge cultural touchstone because you can always tell whether something's important when your parents, like my dad went to see it. My dad didn't yeah. go see movies, right? Like right. my dad went to see this, and then the next movie he saw after that, I think was Top Gun Maverick. It was God, like the last, so good. You know what oh. I mean? Like, yeah, okay, that was good, yeah. 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 And that's kind of like, we're gonna be talking about like Shakira's stuff about the Barbie movie, and it's like, whether you like the movie or not, you can't deny its relevance because people are still talking about it, and it almost came out a year ago. Like that mm-hmm. was almost a year, it was eight months ago that that movie came out, and it's still being asked to celebrities to ask their opinions on it when they give interviews, so. Just something to think about. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want you to see this. So there's an upcoming stage, a new Broadway stage adaptation of Romeo and Juliet that everyone's dunking on because of the the young lady that Tom Holland is appearing in this with. I, I wonder I saw what. Saw that you. Th- yep. Um, so the the point is, look, the 1996 one is no masterpiece. I, no. I will say that. Uh, but you know, people are kind of dunking because they're saying that the woman who's playing Juliet isn't exactly feminine. Therefore, mm. they're like, "Am I supposed to believe that Romeo went and died for this?" Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's but, what they're saying. It's like the point of the Romeo and Juliet is that the Montagues and the Capulets have had this uh, yeah. ages old thing that they've been arguing over, and nobody really knows what the hell it started over. I I positive that it's going to be some kind of race gender thing that that would be exactly up their alley yeah and really boring yeah and unbelievably boring right crisis parties however are not boring no they're not not at all um yeah that's uh oh in the chat not a uh, no mandates not a fed says it's over slaves i wouldn't be surprised Probably. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be surprised about that. So we'll have to. Uh, you can make your own meme about this. Reject. Uh, reject modernity. Embrace tradition. Ooh, I'll do that. There you go. Thank That's you. Perfect. Happy to help. <laughs> uh, and you know, Leo. Maybe Leo can play Tom Holland's dad in this. They'll bring him back, so he can't be. He's too old to play Romeo now. He's gonna be the racist dad. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, he's already. He did. Uh, what's it called? He did. Um, what's the movie where he's the the slave trader? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Django. Django and Chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, he's got the. He's already done it so far, so you can do that. All right, so, so just take that what you will. A lot of people were criticizing it, and it is. And to be fair, this is not a movie. This is a stage adaptation. So the unfortunately, 
for a lot of people to understand that like stage adaptations that they don't like race has never been as big of an issue for stage ad adaptation same with gender like a lot of times men will play women's roles and women will play men's roles that's not uncommon it's a lot more common for, yeah. on the stage than it is mm -hmm. in movies and television so it's not as big of an issue more people are just dunking because they think the girl is not uh, attractive enough to play Julia <sighs> so say what you will all right, I, I did see, um, what was it? I saw uh, Dane sent me like a, a tweet about it saying like, could they pick a woman more effing ugly? I said, that's just rude. That's just <laughs> rude, bro. Come on. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to ask Phil's question about this because Jojo Siwa is a performer. She was on, like, she's dance moms, right? And she was like a, a Disney kid or a Nickelodeon kid. And she's going through what she de deems her bad girl persona, but it's the most like stereotypical and contrived thing I've ever seen. She just looks like Goldust the wrestler or in the Blue Meanie mm -hmm. put together. And I want to know, like, how do you do something like this? Because there's this video, I'll show you this video here where she's like walking like a red carpet, I guess it's a yellow carpet, but she's walking a red carpet, right? Watch this. And she's, I, I guess this is supposed to be scary, but shouldn't your personality change if your costume and stuff changes? I mean, look, it's all superficial, obviously. Yeah. And so she's just like, I wanna have a little bit of a goth tinge. There's nothing bad boy about it. Like people that used to be bad boys were people that like got drunk, got into car wrecks and killed their best friends. Yeah. Like that's what the kind of like bad boys were or, or like got got hooked on heroin. Yes. Like that kind of stuff. It's like now everything is a, is phony. It's all fake. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all just a look and for show. Not that I'm saying you should go and do things like, you know, hurt people or whatever, but like bad boy meant you actually behaved badly, not that you dressed up in a costume. Mm -hmm. And that's all anything is nowadays. It's all phony, at fake level, BS. At the corporate level, nothing is actually authentic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what? And and that's ninety nine percent of what people see on the internet too. Like you look at, I mean, people think Vegas is the party town, right? And it's debauchery, and that's what you hear on one side. But at the same time, it's now the Disney version of Vegas because in the eighties and the seventies, that's when it was real debauchery and real Mom. party time, yeah. and and like. That was when it was like, that's when it got the reputation that has carried it to where it is now. You what, know? I, what I find mm. interesting about it is like, it, it's, it's all so fake, right? And everybody can tell that it's fake because it doesn't feel organic. But anything that comes to you now that isn't done through like your, like, like if you get found by a company, you're not going to come off as organic in any way for the most part. Like you kind of have to get discovered on your own if you want people to buy whatever you're selling. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, that's, that's how it feels to me. It's uh, there. She's kind of, she's um, taking goth aesthetic and Gene Simmons aesthetic and trying to make it her own, and it just feels like something that an art director designed. Look, for her. if and I, I'm for however anyone wants to dress and express themselves and stuff like that. It's totally cool. I just feel like the the whole like I am in this. Yeah. You know, this is my blah 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 phase. It's like look, it's a look just tell people that you like the look and you're playing with the look because you're not doing anything real. It's all just look and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with going and saying, I'm looking to have this look, but like the idea that like, you know, now you are somehow different. No, you're just in a costume, which is fine, but because it's not anything more than it is. Part or, of performing is yeah, putting on a costume. Absolutely. The There's they, nothing they wrong with just, that. It's like kind of how people always dunk on like what um, Taylor Swift or them wear when they're performing, but that's, designed that way for a reason yep. right it's a costume that's designed to be both functional and have a look to it mm -hmm. that's supposed to evoke the tone of the show and at that level i mean at, i mean at that level it's probably just evoking the tone of the three songs that she's gonna yes, play in that outfit before, before changing. she changes yeah. because at that level she can you know they're all of their outfits are custom made yeah you know which you know cool but again if you want to go ahead and get dressed up get dressed up I, I but look just at like it. everything else in in society now like it's just kind of phony. When I look at something like this, all I think about is like the time you spend in the makeup chair while they're like painting your eyes, <laughs> right. you know? Like uh, who was that? Or I was watching, who was it um, that put, was in Baron Harkonnen in, in Dune 2 was talking, talking about how he chose to do, like he didn't want to have CGI. He wanted it to be like actual Real. Prosthetics, mm, prosthetics and stuff like that and would spend hours in the make, eight hours a day in the makeup chair to look that way, right? Rough. That's crazy. Wow. So, uh, you know, it just, it all looks kind of dorky. <laughs> so, pr pr 
perhaps she also evoked Miley Cyrus saying like she wants to have her Miley Cyrus uh, moment, which She's is gonna just start like, twerking. She wants to she wants to have her like downward spiral, and mm. then it's the most cliche thing you can possibly think of. All right, uh, and then yeah, there was the video. It says uh, this is from Dom Luke who says former Nickelodeon child star JoJo Siwa is going viral for her appearance at the iHeart uh, Radio Awards. Uh, the now twenty-year-old provocative lesbian says she is embracing her new era. Is that a ter- is that like a title, provocative lesbian? I I, I, it's just also cringe. All right, uh, any Netflix users here? For those of you that don't sail the high seas, this is a little bit concerning. Facebook uh, basically let Netflix see your DMs to help give you uh, more accurate recommendations. Excuse me? Oh yeah, well listen to this. So Facebook's parent company Meta allegedly allowed Netflix to peer at its users DMs for nearly a decade to help the streaming giant better tailor content for its own users, so said in a new lawsuit. Decade. Court documents unsealed on March 23rd that were filed last April as part of a major antitrust lawsuit against Meta appear to have exposed the intricate relationship between two Silicon Valley's biggest players. So basically what happened was is like, um, like Reed Hastings got added to the board over at Meta, which mm. gave them access to all of this stuff. So it says, uh, the two Silicon Valley players agreed to custom partnerships and integrations that help supercharge Facebook's ad targeting and ranking models from at least 2011, thanks to the personal relationship between Netflix co-founder Reed Hastings and Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg. It's reminding me of when Facebook got caught selling all that data to China yeah. as well. Um, I don't know who I would want to have my data less, China or Netflix, but you know, both of them I'd prefer to not have my, my my data i mean uh, the thing is like your data is not yours unfortunately yeah. it should be i would love to have some kind of legislation that makes your data protected and makes it yours mm-hmm. i don't see it happening because it's too functional for the government there's nothing the government loves more than to say well right you know all that data is out there it's not it's not it's not you know they're not putting your data out there you know you have to go ahead and tell them that you want it to keep private because you gave it to them or whatever nobody actively says i want my information to be available to be sold Nobody. In fact, everybody says I would rather you didn't. Yeah. Somebody, but um, that's somebody what mentioned that nobody's on Facebook anymore. Maybe if it was IG, it would matter. I'm but definitely those, not. Those are linked no. now. Your face for most Facebook of it, your Facebook yeah. Messenger and your Instagram messages are linked together. I don't. Yeah, I don't use any of their like. I'll use my Instagram messages in there, but like, there's no like. Yeah. I don't yeah. talk to anyone right. about like anything at all. Like maybe I'll send back and forth things that are on Facebook. You sure, know, like, yeah. but there's well, no conversations that happen on any Facebook property yeah. at all. God, no. I'd like to make a statement to Netflix and I guess the greater population that I meant everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I keep getting these recommendations that I get all the time. That makes perfect sense. Lawyers allege that within a month of Hastings joining Facebook's board of directors, the two companies signed an inbox API interface agreement that allows Netflix programmatic access to Facebook users' private messages. And remember, they did let you know in an update yep. that you just had to press yes if you wanted to keep using Facebook. Because nobody read the whole thing. Because nobody reads it. And you didn't have a choice. Yep. If you said no, you just can't have a Facebook account, a face, yeah. a Facebook account which is wonderful. Now I'm guessing, I'm wondering if this is why all my recommends are the way they are. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the things I've watched. It's because of uh, what, of the messages they've read. I don't remember. What they realized I, is I really wanted to be a spy. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they learned. I think that I had my, uh, I think I got rid of Facebook I stopped actually using Facebook in yeah. like 2017 okay. and shut off my, uh, cause I had a public page and stuff like that just because it got to the point where like you'd post something and I like, there was like, I don't know, 70 or 80,000 people on it or whatever. And, and like I'd post something and then like 200 people would see it. So it's just, why am I on here? Yeah, like, what am I doing? I literally get zero engagement anytime. I don't really use it, but anytime I do post yeah. nothing, there's no, like you, there is no benefit that I can come up with for being on Facebook or any Facebook property at all anymore. Like yeah. you get nothing yeah. at all. You're I, literally just giving them stuff. I mm-hmm. deleted my Facebook in 2021. That was like the best decision yeah. that I ever made. Nice. Thank you very much. I have an Instagram page, but like that I update infrequently and it's literally like I don't put up reels. I don't do any. I put up pictures once in a while. Uh, Dane Font responded to this uh, to this topic. He said, oh. "This is the same company that labeled my Facebook profile as election interference because I upload Timcast content. Never, <laughs> they never showed me the video that Good infringed job. the violation and didn't allow me to appeal either. Lastly, no one in support could tell me what was the violation. Unreal. Heart emoji. Unreal. <laughs> they deleted my they deleted my Instagram account." 
Like I have a this is actually my second Instagram account. Yeah. They deleted my first one for uh, for nothing at all. They wouldn't tell me. And again, that one was like you know sixty seventy thousand people. And just like yeah, right. see, it. and it was right after the election too. So it had something to do. Wow. I had something. And I the thing is like I'm really poli- obviously really political on Twitter and stuff. But sure. if you go to my Facebook page. You barely can tell yeah, that I have any politics. Mine's the same way. You know, my, my, yours is all skating stuff. Well, my, my, I guess I'm not really all that political on Twitter either, but I, I, I talk about movies and television and some stuff that I guess like runs around the edges of politics, I guess, because of those. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of politics that are part of those areas, right? But my Instagram is just skating and literally yeah. in, in just really like offensive memes usually in this in my story posts. Well, that's that's good. about it and it nothing be. else. And so... When people uh, like my engagement on Instagram stopped because I wasn't skating nearly as much, so I wasn't I wasn't putting out content every day. And the people that follow me, they're you know I don't know they don't care about like before. Like most of my following came from skating, mm-hmm. and now people follow and then like they don't really care about skating. So what do you expect them to do? Right? Yeah, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. So it's just uh, I should probably create a separate page just for like talking about movies and television on there, but I want to start over and stuff like that. I hate that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want to ask you guys, um, why do you think millennials age better than Gen X? Phil might have a dog to, to a dog in this fight. Do they this, age? This, okay. We're going to watch this video and then we'll see what he says. Okay. What this guy says. He's got his own thoughts on this. So here we go. The years in the back that didn't hear me the last time. Millennials look fantastic for our age. And you cannot tell us otherwise. And the reason why you think we don't look great for our age is because we have set the new standard of what it looks like to age. And let me give you some examples. I'm 30. I got cat hair all over me. I'm 37 years old and I'm about to be 38 this year. I'm about to give you some examples of what it looked like to be my age back when I was young. Al Bundy is 39 years old. George Cassanda, 31 years old. Look at this entire cast of Cheers right now. Look at them. Literally, I'm older than every single one of these people in this photo. None of those people are Gen X. I'm a full decade older than Kelsey Grammer. If I rolled up to your house and I was like, oh, I brought my grandpa. Yeah, they're boomers. He's 35. I'm 37. I'm literally older than him. These two are both supposed to be 45 in Father of the Bride. Like, there is a world in which all of us, all three of us, went to the same elementary school. And, of course, Homer Simpson is exactly the same age as me. So if you see a millennial out here being like, oh my gosh, we look so young for age, it's because the difference between us and you is so much closer than the difference between us and them. And like, we've set like a new standard of aging. So, of course, fine, we'll admit, Jane, see, you obviously look younger, you are younger. Do you know any example, like, I, I just don't ever see Gen X talk about this stuff. Gen- yeah. Well, I mean, Gen X doesn't talk about anything. Yes. Gen X is generally just like, shut up and leave us alone because you're all idiots. I saw this. 100% the way that Gen X feels, believe me. When I was looking into this topic that we're going to talk about later about Gen Z and and loneliness, what I found really interesting was if you just Google Gen Z and then you Google millennial, there's just this unbelievable difference in tone for the articles. The tone for all the millennial articles is just depressing. It's like, Nobody's gonna own a home. They're all depressed. Is je- is our millennials the failed generation? I don't know who. I don't know if if like my generation raised millennials because I feel like we're too young to do that. I feel like it was boomers, but whoever did, you guys blew it. Yeah, <laughs> you blew it. My dad's like right at the cutoff of of boomer and Gen X. Yeah. He's sixty two. My mom's okay. sixty four. So they're like right at right the end. end. Of being Gen X and boomers. Boomers. Yeah, yeah. Just the end of boomers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I it mean, was I'm, right before Gen X began. Yeah. So I mean, if if uh, if Gen X uh, and I'm I'm 37, I'm gonna be 38. So I'm I'm like at the edge of being a millennial and, uh, and right. being Gen X. And you know, we were allowed pretty much to our own devices as long as you weren't getting in trouble, and mm-hmm. that allowed for a certain amount of freedom, which taught you how to take care of yourself better. Mm-hmm. And millennials, it seems like one of the issues is like, yes, they're it may perhaps they're aging slower, but they're also not evolving nearly as fast because they yeah. haven't been forced to. Um, I mean, yeah, like look, I mean. When I was, how old is he? Thirty-seven. He he's, when I was, so he's my age. When I was thirty-seven, I looked like a baby. Okay, like even still, if I shave, I look like I'm forty, right? And I'm pushing fifty. Um, so he, and also he looks like he's got a little Asian in him, and that actually helps too. Yeah. Asian people tend to age a little slower. So I mean, maybe he does skincare routine, and you know, he he's he's worn more sunscreen than someone else, which is which or. Or maybe he just drinks more water because that, honestly, the amount of water you drink over the course of your life has a massive effect on how old you look. Mm-hmm. If you drink enough water, if you drink a lot of water every day, you don't get wrinkles. You just don't. Like, seriously, like it takes forever. Mm-hmm. So those kind of things make more difference than like, you know, just the fact that they're 
you know, younger and, and oh, you know, because of the things, the way people looked back in the day. I also think that like Cheers specifically, they weren't, they weren't trying to make them look young. They were trying to make them look like older people. Yeah. Like Al Bundy was supposed to look like he was an older guy, like mm. an adult. Nowadays, everybody's trying to look young. In the 90s and 80s, if you were 40 and you looked 40 like these people, it was that was normal. It was expected. They were, nobody was trying to make themselves look young because life generally was harder and we had more people that worked with their hands, et cetera, et cetera. So it wasn't how thought of it the same way. It's like how many teenage care, like how many people experienced their lives through watching movies and television, watching teenagers that were all in their late 20s yeah, right? when they were playing teenagers, you know, as yeah. they always were in yeah. movies and television. They didn't actually show kids their age because they can't actually have kids their age working on those sets right. because it would cost a whole ton of money and they'd have to quit rap uh, early because they can only work a certain amount of hours a day. So mm -hmm. Unless you're Nickelodeon. And yes, well, that, well that's uh, that's a story for another day. We've been doing that quite uh, quite uh, quite a bit lately. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Diddy suffers blow after posting on social media. So he finally came back to social media. He's uh, still under investigation. He had both of his home, well, two of his homes raided. And then he posted on Sunday for Easter Sunday uh, uh, an image of his daughter, and he had to turn the comments off. I mean, look, Diddy. No. Did he do it? Did he do it? Did he? Uh, so the raids were part of a sex trafficking investigation. If you guys are new to this or you haven't been paying attention, uh, they reported that two of Combs' sons, Justin and Christian, were spotted in handcuffs outside of his home. They were not, uh, they were not like, they were only detained. They were not arrested, but they were detained on site there. Mm. But he posted, Happy Easter, Easter from Baby Love, and caption, he captioned the post. He then muted the comments, and he's lost over 21,000 followers since all of this happened, which seems about par for the course. Yeah, it's not a surprise. Right? Right? Yeah. Like uh, you, you get caught doing a bunch of stuff or so, allegedly doing a bunch of stuff and people start not How many following followers him. did he have? Uh, what did it say here? I, I saw the number down here. Uh, it did doesn't it, list his follower I'm count. I'm sure that it was many here. millions. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it sure. says... Um, uh, there's a big change compared to previous days. He was actually gaining followers. On Sunday, he gained 54 new followers. On Saturday, he acquired an extra 1,784. And on Friday, he gained 1,661. Uh, in the last 30 days, he lost 27,698 Instagram followers at the time. Uh, and his follower count sent at 20,207,215. Wow. Yeah, so, you know. Still negligible. Somebody said, turning off comments just ain't gangster. No, no, it's... it's <laughs> It's really not. So uh, for a guy, a, a lot of people would probably end up following him just to follow what's going on with things to see how it, ha you know, see what happens with it. You know? Yeah, that's what I, I imagine that, that most of his new followers are like, ooh, let's I find wanna, out. I you wouldn't know? pay attention to this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I didn't uh, care until I wondered, did he do it? I, di uh, in the chat, unknown says, how long till people forget about this? That is one of the downsides unfortunately of a lot of these types of stories is like there's just so much bad news and, and crap that comes out of Hollywood that you just end up kind of memory holding a lot of it because you just there's so much of it yeah I mean I guess that that is really what's what's happening but it, I mean that's part of the culture nowadays is like you've got rapid fire information and when was the last story that like really stuck with you for more than a couple of days well, probably the attack in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. And that before one. that, it was Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, honestly, that kind of does show like the stuff that's actually important to you. Most of the stuff that people get worked up about on the internet, most of the stuff people are po are posting about, it doesn't re probably doesn't really affect you. And and the two things that I've found to be most compelling, the two wars that still you know, affect me a little bit because of like taxes or policy and stuff, but I don't have a whole lot of direct ability to have any kind of effect on, you know? Yeah. So I yeah. like all, of, of all the stuff that, that has happened in the past two years, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's been, you know, small potato stuff mostly. It's funny because that Candace and Nick Fuentes stuff has been popping, at least on my timeline, popping off for like two weeks. And I, at first I was like, oh, that's crazy. Two weeks later, I'm like, this does really affect my life. I don't care. Yeah. Just stop talking That's about it, guys. That's how I feel about Crowder. Just and, shut up. I don't, yeah, I, don't I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Drop no. receipts or I don't care. No, you, no. here's the thing. Even with the receipts, I don't care. 
I don't care. Like, I don't care either way. That's the thing. Like, I'm at this point where I'm so jaded that when any of these stories comes out and somebody's a bad guy and another mm -hmm. person's a good guy and they say innocent until proven guilty, I'm like, bro, I just don't care anymore. Like, I just, yeah. I just don't. Like, is he a bad guy? Is she a bad girl? Is she a bad guy? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I just can't bring myself to. I will convey the information. I don't have the energy or the bandwidth exactly. to care about all of the stuff that someone is making a demand that I care about. I mean. We aren't designed to. No, not at all. Not at all. You know, you're not supposed to. And so that's part of the reason why I think like it's super important for people to try and remember you can step away from the internet. Mm -hmm. Like if something's going on on the internet, you can step away from the internet and do something else and it literally goes away. Yeah. Like if you are not looking at the internet, whatever your social media platform of choice it is, whatever, whichever one it is, you feel better. If you're not looking at it. <laughs> whatever's going on there actually doesn't matter mm -hmm. you know it, it's got to be very rarely does like the internet f actually pour over into real life uh victor white says apathy is fatal they have you just where they want you no it's about allocating your time and energy to things that are actually going to yeah. affect your life on a daily basis uh how steven crowder treats his employees doesn't affect me on a daily basis neither does candace owens or yeah. nick fuentes or any of this stuff i don't give uh, any like, shits about any of that and 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 look, I get it. It's it's interesting to talk about for a lot of people. Sure, but sure. to me, like outside of doing my job, I'd rather just focus on the stuff that I have in this sphere. Mm -hmm. And even then, like uh, a, only a certain amount of this stuff is super, super interesting to me. Box office trends are honestly more interesting than me to me than a lot of this stuff because it speaks more to how the general population feels about this stuff rather than people who are entrenched in all of these stories. Mm -hmm. Like I can I can tell you what the the really really initiated think about this stuff, sure. But what is the general general public think about it because they're not connected to a lot of this stuff as a $20 one here from Gordon Shumway says boys 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 uh, showing up late today my request is for the boys to celebrate a crisis party by doing the night at, uh, by the, do, doing the night at the Roxbury head bob <laughs> during the song I can do that I love that movie. we can do that so uh, we'll have to wait and see where the Diddy story goes, but I'm sure more stuff will come out. But again, he had another lawsuit that, you know, was coming out. That, that's the impetus for all of this stuff. And it's just like everybody's getting sued. Jamie Foxx got sued. That one just went away. Uh, all of this stuff. And you just never know what to do. And I think part of that is, to be fair, a lot of it is my own, my own fault because I'm surrounded by this news every day. So mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to be really, really shocked or appalled by any of this stuff when it's yeah. all you're reading or taking in. Mm -hmm. So do with that what you will. Don't, uh, don't allow yourself to be jaded on that account. All right. <laughs> we have to watch this video. I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw this, but we'll, we have to watch this video. You're going to okay. love this. Uh, infiltrating a... a, a oh, specific, God, I've seen, you've seen this. <laughs> I've okay. seen this. Yeah, okay, this is fantastic. Here we go, guys. Um, this is a queer fat club. Um, I'm, I'm queer and fat. Okay, thank you for joining. We're just um, introducing ourselves at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Joe? Yeah, uh, my name's Joe. I go by he, they, and uh, I identify as 275 pounds. Okay. okay. Um, I feel like Jay's kind of making fun of me, though. I know it's kind of a shock. I know. Kind of a new thing. I'm, I'm just, you know, monk. Do what? I said I apologize. Oh, no, you're good. Um, are you comfortable leaving the group at the moment? Why? Why? I'm, I'm not understanding why you're joining the group. This is the queer and fat group now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I came here for. Okay. Um, and you said you identify as fat? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is just for fat bodied people. Yeah, I understand. I, I identify as a fat bodied person. I'm not understanding where you're coming from. Are you guys comfortable with me here? I mean, I'm pretty chill on my end. I'm not comfortable, no. Can we take like a vote? Oh my Can't God. Can't take a vote. Um, this is a... I, I just imagine, I wonder how like he got the idea to do that. I. Well, uh, because the identifying thing, mm -hmm. you, if yeah. that it's, it's uh, no, just I'm saying, literally where did he find, was there like a message board post? How do you find, they advertise big body yeah, jihadis. How, yeah. I need Google. <laughs> I imagine he probably, he more than likely, I, I, I assume that what he did was he, he was like, Oh, I want to troll someone that mm -hmm. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. So what's one of the funnier things to identify as a fat person? when you're clearly not which is obviously lampooning the idea of identifying as which is again the the point of that is actually to poke fun at the I identify as a woman or I identify as a man because those are the two the two fundamental things that or the two basic things that that pro, that call into question someone's uh, uh, acknowledgement of reality I suppose if yeah. you are if you 
if you actually demand that a, a demand that someone conceive of a trans woman as a woman and demand that a trans man be conceived of as a man, you're literally making a demand on the way that someone else perceives reality. And you can't yeah. do that. Yeah, it questions uh, the whole theology of it. Exactly. You know, so. uh, I wonder if that's going to be more common. because like, Of course young. it will. No, I mean, look, like, Lauren, I Lauren Southern already did it. She changed into a man for, uh, for in, uh, insurance reasons in Canada. She did? Like, Lauren Southern changed her, her gender, and, and it was years ago that she did oh, that. Oh, wow. I don't know if she changed it back, but she changed it for so she could make, obviously, to lampoon it again. <laughs> but it was, uh, was to get a, a different rate or whatever for her, for her uh, car insurance, I think. Must be so, nice. Yeah. Must be nice. So. All right, what would you guys like to see? Cringe or cute of the day? I like cringe. Cringe? Yeah. We'll do cringe first then. Today's pretty pretty basic level cringe, but you're going to you're going to love this Gorlock is oh, back. Oh, Gorlock return. God. Yep. To mute the audio, I don't want to get copyrighted. <laughs> what? I can't even that's hilarious that that is a a trans woman too. I wish I had an ounce of their confidence, you know? <laughs> Honestly, hit the three though. <laughs> I mean, three. that's good. You know, it's uh, bro. What are you doing? Yeah, good God. You know, it's it is what it is. I it, I'm I'm with you though. Like it, it would be nice to have that level of confidence in anything. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. All right, uh, we got cute of the day as well here, ladies and gentlemen. Gold Digger Comic Universe Review says, uh, I hope this works. This is Kami Cat, a stray that, sub that someone dropped off at my parents' farm. She was a scrawny little thing uh, that was pregnant. Here she is with her four kitties enjoying Ooh. a treat. They call her Kami Cat? Kami Cat. Why? I have no idea. What makes her a Kami? If you feed them, they keep well, it was, coming. It was with a, a Y, not an IE, so maybe it's some, it means something mm. different. <laughs> oh. There you oh, go. That's my hand. Yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> now I'm hungry. All right, let's do one more here. This one's from Piktaku says, house sitting for my pastor's family got their three, got their three, their sons, two, and my dog is all in the house. Here it is. Let's look at these. Um, is it not showing them? There we go. There we go. Dog supremacy. There we go. Hey, did you get, you got the Gordon Shumway, right? Oh, uh, did Super I get the, Yeah, I got that one. Okay. Yep. Yes, the head, head bob. That's it. Sorry. Good looking dog. Adorable. Good looking dogs. It's hard, you know, it's hard to have a bad looking dog, man. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, dogs are good looking in my opinion. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and uh, now that we are 43 minutes into the show, ladies Perfect and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get, get started, started then, shall we? So um, if you guys don't know Shakira, we love Shakira here. She's a tax hero. That's what we yes, like about right. her yes. more than anything. But Shakira is lovable for another reason today, and that is because she has pissed off a whole bunch of feminists yes. by talking about her take on the Barbie movie, which came out eight months ago now, Jeez. and is somehow still unbelievably culturally relevant because they're still asking all of these celebrities about it. And she talks about how she went to see it with her sons and they didn't like it. And she said she had her critiques of it as well. So this is what she said. I'm just gonna read her quote. She says, my sons absolutely hated it. They felt that it was emasculated and I agree to a certain extent. I'm raising two boys. I want them to feel powerful too while respecting women. I like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men to also protect and provide. I believe in giving women all of the tools and the trust that we can, that we can do it all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. I think that men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose as well. We complement each other and that compliment should not be lost. I don't think she understands how hot of a take that is in current. Probably year. doesn't. Uh, that, which, is, which is kind of, which is why I'm kind of always fascinated by the idea of like who exists in the Hollywood sphere and orbits the culture war without actually being a part of it. Right. Because it kind of seems like a great place to be, if I'm being completely honest. That you could kind of live there and not really have to worry about these things or or think about these things at all. Because let's face it, most Hollywood moms as we've seen with a lot of them, buy into the patriarchy or, or the criticisms of the patriarchy and buy into mm -hmm. the feminist narrative whole hog, not just for their daughters, but for their sons as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, we got a $20 one here from Mikey says, remember people, those hips don't lie. No, they don't. They do not. They do not lie. They are very truthful. I think that not being American helps. Yes. Perhaps. Well, yeah. I mean, clearly. I've been told, I, somebody can let me know, perhaps I'm wrong, but I've heard that Spain is also pretty woke these days. 
I don't know. Um, that I, again, I hate that term. But I've heard, it's my understanding that like the Western speaking or the English speaking world in the West is where it's kind of like the most poignant and, and most uh, having the most effect. It's having a, a significant, feminism is having a significant impact in, uh, um, in India, if I understand correctly, because yeah. in, in India, women need some help. <laughs> there's, some, there's some rough stuff going on there. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah. You know, like it's it's still the the Western, uh, you know, Western world is where it's kind of most poignant. The reason I had that that uh, that comment was because before, if you guys remember, Gal Gadot had some comments during her initial press tour when they were first announcing the Snow White movie, where she talked about how the that Snow White wasn't going to be saved by the prince. Whatever, right? That she she didn't get much criticism for that because everybody hates Rachel Zegler. But she had some very similar comments to what Rachel or to what um, Shakira said yep. here a couple of years ago when they were promoting Wonder Woman, where she basically said, "I want movies that you know don't put down boys, but also uplift them as well as the girls." And those type of takes are just not that common in this industry anymore from from most of the women. And that what goes uh, the same with Shakira. She's also not from. America, Gal Gadot being from Israel. So you've got multiple women who say these things that just don't have the pervasive American influence of feminism that seems to embody most of the female celebrities. Not all of them, but obviously a lot of the more vocal ones. So I just wonder how much of it is just not being from America. Um, I don't know. I do think that like when it comes to, um, so when it comes to like Latin women mm. yep. or people that are, are from South America and stuff, I think the language helps a little bit because of the masculine and, and feminine parts of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that it's just, uh, um, I don't think that it's just exclusively non-English speakers. No, know? it's baked into the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's, uh, so she's Colombian, but she's like, she owes like a bunch of tax money to Spain. That's Based. that's what it is. She owes Sp the nice. the Spanish government a bunch of tax money, which uh, of course I'll have to add her to my tax hero wall I have over here of uh, pictures of celebrities who have bravely stood up against the government. Um, and the idea of talking about protect and provide was actually kind of shocking to hear from that because I just don't imagine most celebrities, especially females, would use that language because that's ascribing a certain amount of uh, status to a man that that's his job yeah. when most of them just don't see that as reality anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, uh, Latin women aren't quite the same as like, you know, the average progressive. No, I don't think, I, I don't think that it's not like they're immune to it. You look at someone like AOC, yeah. right? Um, but the culture is part of it, but that's part of, that's what insulates people from progressivism and, and like the left kind of the, the left's, uh, operating system is like a virus it infiltrates and changes the culture so the cult the strength of the latin culture mm -hmm. is why yeah. it can it, the left can't infiltrate the same way when you look at like you look at like the way that uh the way that um catholics are nowadays it's like it's very it's very because infiltrated it's infiltrated. Yeah. the catholic yeah. the catholic church you know you, the, the pope is very very progressive there's a lot of catholics that are doing some stuff that ain't very catholic or at least not what you would consider uh, typically catholic but yeah so what but what's culture funny? culture is what insulates you from leftism so the stronger your culture the less the left can actually infiltrate and, and take it over. Her, in, but she's part of an industry that's whole mo is to be part of that infiltration technique. Oh, well, I mean, especially music. Music long before movies and television pushed women independence. <laughs> long before, I'm just saying. I'm, pop I'm aware. Music, pop music. Yeah. Right? Well, like, I mean, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, like, uh, I mean, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. And it, the, you know, progressivism is something that, that does come, that frequently uses art as a vehicle. Yep. Um, but again, I think that, like I said, the, the cultural, this, this cultural significance of, of like Latin culture is why the left can't, even whether it be Hollywood or whatever, there, there, is, that, there is a retention of that culture and culture insulates you from the, the kind of progressivism because the whole point like progressivism tries to dilute your culture it mm -hmm. tries to dissolve it and, and replace it with its own um values and well, so that's kind of why you have like the meme or like the idea of the passport bros who go to foreign countries yeah. Yeah. and mm -hmm. find women who are based which is 
it's just normal for their own, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I wonder then what's, what's harder to do? Is it harder to stop the art from getting infiltrated by leftism or is it harder to, you know, harden your culture against, you know, prevent your culture from being infiltrated? Well, I mean, to prevent your culture from being infiltrated there, you, you have to have at least some masculine tendencies in it. Yeah. And it, because the, the masculine tendencies of, of a culture are going to be what will actually say no. Yeah. Yeah. You know, feminine, tendency, fem, feminine tend tendencies aren't the kind of tendencies where you're just like, I'm putting my foot down. No, you know they're agreeable. I mean? it's, you know, it's, it's agreeableness, those kind, of, those kind of impulses and stuff. Yeah. And whereas, you know, that kind of stuff is important to other, understand people. There has to be lines where you're like, hey, mm -hmm. this is too far. This is no. This means you have, there has to be boundaries because without boundaries, without boundaries, you, you have, you know, essentially just chaos, you know. Yeah. I, I found it funny that to a lot of the people who just live in the sphere but don't criticize the Hollywood culture, how shocked they were by what she said because they like some people thought it was an april fool's joke <laughs> so okay so so he yeah. says oh shakira this is not the take somebody says uh uh is this an april fool's joke somebody says just say you didn't understand it and go what Jesus. i find interesting about that is like you're supposed to interpret art differently right uh one of the things about the movie was like i didn't like the movie i i thought the first hour of the movie was fine and then after that I felt like it kind of fell apart but I didn't begrudge the people that took something different from it mm -hmm. I, I just thought that that's look this movie isn't for me and whatever critique there is of of uh, modern patriarchy I thought was kind of uh put upon by the viewers rather than from the actual director because the director of the movie when asked about what the message of the movie was couldn't really give a good answer so I was like look if when she was asked about this she was like what's the fe like, what's the feminist message do you think that she was do you think she couldn't give an answer because she couldn't or she couldn't because she was tr she was unable to to actually I did, come up I felt, with an act with a good argument that wasn't gonna sound feminist like she she was trying to be uh you know amicable to both sides and and she wasn't capable of walking the line properly no i felt that she was hit with a question where like at that point nobody had really questioned what the movie was or asked her to delineate for you know to uh you know go further into her explanation and she started umming and awing and couldn't really explain it and look that's fine like if you had a a surface level message to a movie that's really just a hollywood uh, you know big budget hundred million dollar hollywood blockbuster i don't think there's anything wrong with that but when you make your movie about feminist politics or about anything like this a lot of people might actually ask for further clarification as to what that means now not the people in their sphere because most of the people in their sphere are just going to say rah rah good job down at the patriarchy fine it's 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 a surface level hollywood blockbuster sure, it's yeah. not meant for deeper critique but if it is there, like people are claiming that it is there, and certainly plenty of people, even on the right, went into deeper critique of this movie. Some of them thought it was actually quite brilliant, and, and that's fine. But I just felt like if you're seeing that there, that's not what the director meant, mm -hmm. which is that's kind of the point of art, right? You can take from it what you will, and I'm okay with that. I'm mm -hmm. okay with somebody saying like, look, I don't know entirely what it means, but I made it, and now it's yours to to make of it what you will. I, I would prefer that as opposed to the dude who was making The Boys who got really mad when like right-wing people liked The Boys because it was supposed to be a critique <laughs> of those on the right. I would rather the person be amorphous and say, I don't know what it means, but if that's what you took from it, good. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that that was her intention in that. I think she just got tripped up by the question, but a lot of people have an issue with somebody taking from this movie something different from them, especially Especially if it's somebody that would well, but that's just because people have a problem with other people having opinions. Yeah, that's literally what it is. Yeah. Oh, you, I'm mad because your opinion's not mine. Yeah, which is the dumbest thing in the world. Somebody says no one is buying her album, so she needed attention. They go for the insults real quickly, yeah, instantaneously. When you don't, yeah, when instantaneously. You don't fall in line. Yeah, instant. I mean, believe me, there are there. Are, there are, I have I have seen I have had more replies to a political tweet come back with your band sucks than anything else <laughs> I which saw is you like arguing, okay uh, idiot, i saw you, know? you arguing with somebody what yesterday about uh, oh, what was the guy saying he's like he's not he'd never heard of your your band yeah and yeah. one of the one of the worst arguments he made is he lists he he like he like listed a song and he listed like the lyric video version, which had like way less views than the than the music video, which yeah. had millions of views. Ninety million or something. Like yeah. that. No, no, it was it was. I think it was two weeks. So it was like thirty five million. Yeah. Or so which is just a bad whatever, faith argument. You know. on yeah, this I part. mean, again, that, that that just that's just the the that's the low hanging fruit. That's the easy thing. It's like oh, it's like you know, it's like you're ugly. 
Yeah. Okay. It's like if, if I make a point about politics and someone's like, your face is stupid. It's like, mm. okay, it's, it's the same thing, you know? So, and, and you know, people are going to do that. It doesn't matter. But it is the low-hanging fruit and the, the non-argument. The I don't, it essentially is just, I don't like what you said. Mm. It made me mad, you know? Just say that. I don't care. I thought, um, <laughs> right? I thought Li uh, Libby Emmons actually had an interesting, she made like a one-minute video talking. I adore Libby. Of, yeah, Libby's great. Let's listen to this. I gotta say, I agree with Shakira about the Barbie movie. When she was asked about it in an interview, she said that her sons absolutely hated it because they thought it was emasculating. And like, isn't it? Here's this movie that is so female forward that when the fellas co-starring in the film got an Oscar nod, the entirety of Hollywood freaked out and said it should have gone to the female lead. Could that you imagine hilarious. that ever happening if it were reversed? No, because it would never happen. Shakira said that raising two boys, she wants them to feel powerful. And who could blame her? Trying to raise sons in this environment of female fascism is not easy. Everywhere they look, boys are told that they need to take a step back, let women lead, recognize their privilege, and squash any natural masculine tendencies because somehow who they are is just toxic. We've got to stop telling our sons that being male is problematic, that being strong and ambitious is some kind of fault, that being leader, taking charge, being innovative, wanting to protect and provide are in some way offensive. How many boys look out in an entertainment landscape and see little to no representation of themselves on screens, big or small? That's uh, that's the part I wanted to get into right now, which is like, they'll make the argument that like, uh, oh, thousands of movies are made for men. Like, what actual movies are there to like help men be good fathers? Or, you know, what's actually showing them positive representations of masculinity these days? None. Like, I would even argue like back in the day, you could say that the action movies did that, but most of those these days just come down to being kind of amoral revenge flicks that don't actually have a lot of the same underpinnings that the old ones used to have. Maybe, yeah. I mean, like, I don't really know what it is about the average uh, movie, uh, what type of movie these days is actually a solid message for boys to actually aspire to. Like, I, I don't know. And and they would they would contend that there would be a lot of them. I just don't think they are. One thing well, I but, Yeah, but, but again, like, who? Exactly. Like, what are they? So you're going you're gonna to make an assertion where you know what i mean it, yeah. like it's not that there aren't any out there because you can find like some that are out there but you're not going to find any that are new mm -hmm. not probably not in the past five six seven years or not that i can think of off the top. maybe 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 five years right like where there's like a really again maybe it's maverick you yeah. know but again it, it's yeah. going to be a handful of them and you're going to have to do some searching around you know so also, like uh, the other the other thing that's important to note in these instances, somebody somebody left a tweet to me about this post. They said, "We're supposed to love Shakira now, right? That's what you're supposed to do." I said, "No. What you should do with stories like this is when somebody says something, you know, stupid, criticize them. When somebody says something rational that you agree with, you know, compliment that which you agree with and, and criticize that which you disagree with, and worship no one, especially celebrities, because the worst thing that you could ever do is hold a celebrity to high regard because." their opinions today will not even necessarily be their opinions tomorrow and that you shouldn't base your value or your thoughts and feelings on what celebrities think anyways what you should do is listen to them and take it into account because it does shift public perspective because not everybody has that rational of a take on celebrities so it's important to know them because people are going to have these opinions and they're going to mirror them because other people aren't going to be that discerning if that makes sense yeah, so. I, that definitely makes sense to me. All right, all right. Let's go to super chats then. We got a couple here. We will start from the top. Andrew Jacobs says, "Who is that ghost sitting in the late Mary's chair?" There is nobody there. There's no ghost. I mean, there could be a ghost there, but I can't see them. <laughs> all right. Shane H. Wilder says, "Happy Taco Tuesday, Brett, Phil, and Bertman. Phil, thank you for boys, saving boys. Brett's life, and to Mr. Christopher Bertman, Esquire. Why are you gay?" <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna say that when my mom's in the chat? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you gay? I mean, he didn't say it like that. I said it like That's that, but he used so the words. Good. No, so he's good. funny. Shout out to Shane. Um, and yes, Phil saved my life yesterday because I was like uh, with no, no Mary. Monday and Tuesdays are the hardest days to do if if uh, if somebody is sick. Obviously, if I'm not here, we can't do it because uh, I have to sit here and do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But if Mary's not here, uh, you know, I can't just do a one person show. Nobody would show up. That'd be insane. So I have to fill not just her seat, but I have to fill up uh, also a guest because normally Mondays and Tuesdays we don't have guests. So mm -hmm. thank you guys so, for uh, of course coming out. And today. and had I known. Yeah. I actually could have been here on Monday, but there was just no time to make the yeah. adjustment. So. Dude, Last I literally did not get that notification until mm -hmm. yesterday. Well, yeah, I sent it at like 10 at night on, on Sunday night. 
I got to check the, yeah. the app because I'm not getting notifications. If, you'd have, if you'd have hit me up in the morning, mm -hmm. like first thing in the morning, I could have made the adjustment and drove, uh -huh. driven Sunday night. Mm -hmm. But Sunday, the thing is, if I'm on, if I'm at home, hit me up Sunday morning. I can actually make it for Monday, but I got to drive overnight. So, DC and C says, kind of missing Mary. <laughs> Needs someone's bad takes to hate on. Oh wait, Bertman is here. Hard. <laughs> I have great takes. Exactly. Uh, the the take I, I hate I hate that argument when people talk about bad take. It's like it's just an opinion, like you uh, an opinion you disagree with, and it's also used as like a weapon. Mm -hmm. Oh, bad take! They like want to scare you out of having your opinion on shit. That's a bad take right there. That's a bad take on takes. <laughs> All right, let's hold off on the rest and let's come back after the okay. fact, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about J.K. Rowling. J.K. Oh. Rowling is back and just feels excited about this one because J.K. Rowling has stood up to the Scottish government who has implemented new hate speech laws and essentially she dared them to arrest her and it looks like the Scottish government has been the one to blink. They blocked. They did. So it says, J.K. Rowling dares cops to arrest her for misgendering trans people after a new woke hate crime law. Their words, not mine. It's from the, this is from the New York Post. It says, J.K. Rowling is daring police in her native Scotland to arrest her for misgendering trans people after a new woke hate crime law took effect on Monday. Quote, freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland and an accurate uh, description of biological sex is deemed criminal, she wrote on X. I am currently out of the country, but if what I've written here qualifies as an offense under the terms of the new act, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of the Scottish Enlightenment. Scotland's community safety minister, uh, Siobhan Brown, told the Telegraph on Monday that Rowling's remarks could be reported to the police and investigated. Quote, whether or not the police would think it was a criminal, uh, that it was criminal is up to the police in Scotland for that, she said. Scotland's hate crime law went into effect on Monday. It bans hatred on the basis of age, disability, race, religion, sexual orientation, and transgender identity. It's kind of crazy that they really do believe that they can just uh, su supposedly believe that like the average person's going to believe that they want to ban hate when everyone knows that that's not the point of things like this. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, but just just the fact that they will attempt to to do that. I mean, look. Regardless of what you think, a hate crime law is a thought crime law. Yes. That's all that it is. That means that you had opinions and thought things that were too bad for us to allow, and we're going to punish you for your thoughts. That's all that it is. The actions that you take are what you should be held accountable for, not the thoughts that you have. It'd be great if the first person that was like arrested under this was some like Scottish Gen Zer who called someone a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, okay, boomer, and they're like, arrest that child. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's what could end up happening. I'll give her, I'll give her this. She put her money where her mouth is. Like a couple of weeks ago, she had a tweet where she said, "I would gladly go to jail for what I believe in." Essentially, Based. and I was like, well, I mean. That's, you know, you're, you're J.K. Rowling. I don't know if you're actually going to be arrested for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But it would actually cause an uproar. If this was to cause a trial, it would do one of two things. It would either shine a huge light on what this law really is, which is what Phil described, is ostensibly a thought crime. 100%. And 100% ridiculous to people who are rational thinkers. I saw an interesting... Uh, Twitter thread the other day where this lady was basically saying, if I believe that any of these people were protesting this law because of because they believed in free speech and not because they were just bigoted, I would I would support it 110 percent, but I don't. So that just proves that they don't have any actual understanding of what people feel aggrieved by with this law, mm -hmm. right? They, they have the inability to see people who disagree with them as fully fu uh, formed human beings rather than you know, yeah. inexplicable monsters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the fact that it takes a celebrity like J.K. Rowling to be the one to draw attention to this is kind of insane. But this kind of comes to the argument that people have where it's like, I wonder sometimes was life better before everybody cared about politics as much as they seem to now? Yes. But also, like you, you can make the argument that they got away with more when people weren't paying attention, or it felt like maybe they got away with more. Well, what? Who's getting away with what? Because okay, uh, well, I guess the Patriot Act wouldn't be the greatest example because people were wholly in support of that. Yeah, people, well, people. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how how much people were in support of it. So my my memory of it is that 
most people, people that knew about it were not happy about it, but the government did it anyways. And there were not enough people that were unhappy about it or aware of it to call their representatives. Well, that's what I mean then. Like if more people were aware of it and were drawing atten attention to it, though I guess at that time it would be a lot harder given that there was no social media. No, because there was social media. for So for fine for the pub, for the Patriot Act, right? And that, yeah. But that was that was actually the Patriot Act, now that you mention it, now that I think about it, the Patriot Act probably had Less resistance because of 9-11. But something like, the, yeah. something like the NDAA in 2012, there was a lot of noise about that yeah. for a piece of legislation. Not so much that the average person was aware of it. But that's where, you know, the 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 smith munt Modernization Act was. There was some and other stuff. we talked about that one. Yeah, which we like talked how about. How much things have gone down, downhill since that was repealed. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and so there, there are a lot of things that have happened. Um, that the, that people haven't paid attention to, and you're pro so you're probably right about the the Patriot Act, but mostly it's just it's mostly that people don't pay attention to stuff. And do you yeah. so? Do you think that things were better when people weren't paying attention? Um. So I think that there were le there was, uh, in conjunction with the fact that there was that people were paying less attention. Mm -hmm. The reason people were paying less attention is because you didn't have the phone in your pocket telling you. So yeah. granted, yep. there was there was there was people paying less attention, but there wasn't the ability for the government to spy on you the same way. There wasn't the data collection, so they were paying less attention because there was less to pay attention to. Right? If you had your concerns were maybe the government tapping your phone. Which was fair, like people knew the government did, but that was fairly controlled by like by tap, wiretapping laws and stuff. You had to have a, um, a some kind of warrant, and because there wasn't the national security fervor around it, yeah. that like with the war on terror and the immediacy of the possibility of a terror attack in the United States, that's what the thing is, right? It's the fact that look. There is a terror attack coming right now. We got to get this ability. You got to let us break this law. There's a, they're coming. They're coming right now. And that just wasn't there before 9-11. So, so whereas, yes, people paid less attention, but there was less of a threat. Less fear. Yeah, there was less fear. There was less of a threat of, or a threat of the government oh, uh, you know, violating your rights generally overall. Brought more, uh, this is a broad statement. I'm not saying that they didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there was less of a threat of it. The government was a smaller government. There was less information that you had out there. The government had less access. So yes, but it was, it was not just one aspect. Everything was kind of a lower intensity and because the, of, the, the, because of the, the technology and stuff. And the way it ties in here is it felt like back then, celebrities were discouraged from talking about these things because it would fracture your audience and make it very, very difficult for you to build, you know, to keep your fan base. Uh, somebody mentioned the Dixie Chicks earlier. That, that's what happened with the Dixie Chicks, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, for someone like J.K. Rowling, who's made her money, one of the things I thought was very, very interesting, if you Google J.K. Rowling, all stories about this are what come up. If you Google Harry Potter, nothing about this comes up. So she's kind of conquered the algorithm hmm. in a way where her name remains pretty separate because there's just so much in the realm of Harry Potter that you go through those first three, four, five pages of Google and it's all stuff about, you know, uh, Wizarding World, uh, Cursed Child, uh, Remake on HBO Max, uh, the video games, all that stuff. All of that comes up long before you get to results about her, which is probably exactly how she wants it because it allows her to make her money but also have her beliefs in politics. Now, this is what she said. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering whether she won in this uh, game of cat and mouse, this game of uh, chicken that she played with the Scottish government, she is the one that won. It says, J.K. Rowling hate law posts not criminal, says the government. Here's what it says. Thankfully, yep. but it's, it's still bad. But the, fact ahead, that, the fact that it has to be adjudicated on at all is stupid, yes. right? But uh, the Harry Potter author describes several transgender women as men, including convicted prisoners, trans activists, and other public figures. The new law creates a new crime of, quote, stirring up hatred related to protected characteristics. Uh, characteristics. The force uh, uh, said complaints have been received, by, but no action was taken. The law, which came into effect on Monday, makes it criminal offense to make derogatory comments based on disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity, or being intersex. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak earlier backed Rowling's st stance stating the UK had a proud tradition of free speech. Mr. Sunak you, uh, would not be drawn on whether he supported her approach, saying it was, quote, not right for me to comment on police matters, 
or individual matters. It shouldn't be a police matter at all. That's the, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. We have a proud tradition of free speech. And he added, we should not be criminalizing people saying common sense things about biological sex. Clearly that isn't right. Uh, I mean, I imagine that person would take some heat for that, for saying that in today's day and age. I mean, well, it's, that's not, that was Richie Sunak, right? Yes. That's their, their, the conservative leader now yeah. in the UK. And so, I mean, good on them for actually saying that, right? The idea that, because again, what they're doing is saying, this is what you must think. It's, it, it is criminalizing thoughts. 100%. If you don't think this person is a man or don't think this person is a woman, if you articulate those thoughts, you say those things, then you're breaking the law. So thankfully, the conservatives over there are actually saying, well, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on, even though they're, they're, they've done a terrible job at trying to slow anything down. But that's, that's, that's what's going on at the you know at the end of the day it's it's all thought crimes and it's designed to to consolidate power and give them the ability to you know push back on people that yeah, they disagree with uh scotland first minister uh Humza, is it Humza? Hamza. Hamza? Hamza Youssef said that the law was designed to deal with what he called a rising tide of hatred in society remember this is the country that put a guy like, or at least criminalize the guy because he taught, taught his dog to put the, the dog's paw up in the air. Yeah. Right? Like, paw goes up in the air. And so that's <laughs> the, you know. That was funny. That was, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was <laughs> it was, the whole point was like, oh, let's bother my girlfriend. Yeah. He goes and he, he, you know, teaches the dog an offensive, uh, you know, with an offensive m remark. He'll put the paw up in the air and then like, oh, so we're going to put him in jail for that? We're going to criminalize him for that? I mean, he had to go through all of the whole whole nine yards because he made a joke that people find offensive yeah. but like you know it's not like scotland yard was running to to knock down sarah silverman's door to throw her in jail because she put on a, a nazi outfit you know it's like mm -hmm. it's just it's just going to be selectively enforced against the un you know the people that are unpopular or whatever so it's Who all is it that did the magazine cover with the trump head Oh, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin. Mm -hmm. I almost said Judy yeah. Greer. Failed comedian Kathy Griffin. Uh, like, was she? She was visited by the Secret Service, right? Because of it was like a considered. It could possibly be considered a threat to the president. I don't remember hearing about it. Um, yeah. So here's she commented on a couple of other people that had their opinions on her. Uh, this person says, like most Brits, I am sympathetic to J.K. Rowling's views on biological sex and the need for single sex provisions. But I suspect, like me, most Brits would find calling a trans woman who looks like uh, I don't know this person's name uh, a him to be. Be obtuse and mean spirited, uh, but not uh, though not a criminal offense. So they're saying it would be obtuse and mean spirited to call this person a him because they're trans and they believe that they're trans passing. That's a guy. And and J.K. Rowling says so. If trans identified men are pretty enough, as judged by you, a man, women ought to agree that they're women. Femaleness has no relation whatsoever to how well an individual man or woman performs femininity to male standards. That is the very definition of misogyny. Mm -hmm. She's very well spoken and has clearly thought this stuff through very, very intensely, which is what I like about it more than anything, is that she doesn't just spout off and say things for the sake of upsetting people. She has very, very articulate thoughts yeah. on womanhood and what it means to be a woman. It's true, but her thoughts are honestly the thoughts are kind of incomplete because essentially really? well because essentially turfs are like okay well this is where the revolution stops that's because literally what they're saying Everything's fine but we stop here. yeah they're like all all of the all of the revolution you know the revolution is the the issue is never the issue the issue is always the revolution mm -hmm. so it's not Palestine, it's the revolution. It's not feminism, it's the revolution. It's not capitalism, it's the revolution. It's all the revolution. Well, the feminists have decided, hold on a second. This is where the revolution This stops. is where the revolution stops. That's why they're called conservatives now. That's why they're treated as conservatives. Compared to um, compared to the, uh, the, the trans community and the rest of the LGBTQ Q, AI plus community, um, the, the TERFs, are, are now they're conservative and they're they have been excluded because history has left them behind the way that uh, the way that uh, Hegel described it is history uses people and then moves on and they le and it casts human being individuals aside as history itself is you yeah. know is progressing and so the human and that's part of the reason why the left doesn't mind all the dead bodies they create because those people 
got left behind by history. So they were the, they were the casualties of history, but it's okay because they contributed to the revolution of history. Another so, reason why they don't have a problem with contradicting themselves yep. because it's all about the power that's the revolution. Through. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's all about the revolution. All right. Uh, look, I see all this stuff and I just think uh, for somebody as successful as her who doesn't need to care about these things, if she doesn't want to, right? Uh, I think a lot of people have a lot more respect for someone who doesn't need to be involved in this type of stuff and does because a lot of people have real ire for the ones who have made their money and then pull the ladder up behind them mm -hmm. and say it's not my problem yeah right so for a lot of them you know still you know no no sacred cows it doesn't mean that you should worship at the altar of this person what it means is that they have one good take on one good topic and if anything it says more it says more that they're willing to throw everyone out if they don't rigidly conform to the worldview that they've created on that side and for either side to do that i think is their real shame that either side would ask you to rigidly conform to whatever it is that is the orthodoxy behind your movements. And that's yeah. depressing to me. So, uh, it, so if you want to support, go buy the, the video game and <laughs> yeah, um, get I named my character transmicphobia. Ah, it was so great. That's awesome. That's I didn't awesome. finish it cause I don't like Harry Potter. They're, well, you tried, you tried. <laughs> Uh, they got the new shows coming out. Like they're they're redoing, like they're turning the the movies into sh the books into shows now. Oh, I can't uh, wait to not watch it on HBO Max. Mm, yeah. yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and do some more super chats here. I got to see where we left off. This is the hardest part. Mary's Mary's really good at yeah. reading the super chats. I'm really not good at reading the super chats. I can barely read. I have like the IQ of like a third grader. I saw somebody talking about, uh, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Earlier, I said no. I am not smarter than a fifth grader. Um, Jacob, uh, Andrew Jacobs says ghost girl ghosted us frowny face. <laughs> well, she's, she knows she's, she's on the men. She will feel better tomorrow and hopefully she will be back on the show tomorrow. That's what we hope. Um, Mikey says, uh, battle angel Alito was surprisingly good as far as movies go. I thought that was a great movie. I that, loved it. Or at least I enjoyed it. I don't know about great, but that came out in the last few years. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people really, really liked it. I watched, um, a movie called American Assassin last night. It was the most mediocre movie I've seen in so long. But it was like I, I love a good mediocre like spy or assassin movie. It's uh it's very very paint by numbers. It's exactly the type of thing that you watch while like you're vacuuming or you're doing something <laughs> in the background. Uh, and it's got a great Michael Keaton role. Except for like I was really hoping that there was gonna be a, a turn mm -hmm. with the Michael Keaton character that I didn't get, and that kind of bummed me out. But it was it was fine. The, <laughs> Was it Dylan O'Brien or whatever his name is? Uh, it was, he was fine. Uh, Dave, it, one of the things is like I've got we've gotten so used to like the actors when they do these action roles that they just they, they hit the steroids really hard and they get really really muscular. And the actor that they got for this is it Dylan O'Brien? Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think it was Dylan O'Brien uh, was his name. He he just didn't really bulk up. He was just kind of the same body. Like they show him like before. It's the exact movie. It's it's John Wick where he's got a fiance. His fiance dies and he's got this call to action, and they show him training and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of just the same size. And I'm like, I was like, so he he wanted to get bigger. He just didn't want to lift weight, or he didn't want to, he wanted to get like. Uh, he wanted buff, to get but better. He, just didn't, he to... just didn't want to eat all the meals because exactly. that is the hard thing about putting on weight. All the all he couldn't eat all of the plain chicken. He That's right. The plain <laughs> chicken. You're not he a had member of the seasoning. Listen, and I I struggle with that myself. I am not a member of the clean plate club generally. So <laughs> eating all the food that I need to eat to put on a significant amount of weight that is hard. So I feel your pain. Dave Collins asks Phil, which uh, all that remains song is your favorite to sing live? Uh, recently it's been, uh, Wasteland off the Victim of the New Disease, uh, record. I dig that one a lot. Or Blood I Spill. I really like Blood I Spill too, so. There you go. There you go. Corey Anderson says, Phil, your face does not match that angelic singing voice that you have. I can't wait for the new album. What is the title of the album, if you can say? Cannot say yet, but can't I, say again, it. I can't make any announcements until we announce the tour that we got, but everything's going to come out as soon as we, we, we can announce the tour, and that is not up to us. That is up to the headliner that we're going to be supporting. Yeah. So, All right. Mikey says, old school goth needs to make a comeback. Sure. I, did, I did see this great yeah. meme the other day of this guy at like a military recruitment officer with a goth girl and said like the yes I saw that same one the Marine Corps the Mar every Marine's dream yes it says uh, <laughs> recruitment so far down they're offering you one free goth girlfriend with every enlistment okay oh I didn't God. see that that quote but there was I saw the exact same picture where the dude's like every Marine's dream you go devil you go and I like the you go devil's a part that got me because you know, we, we just watched the uh, the crow yeah because the I saw the trailer yeah dude I first of all I didn't uh, it was alright but 
there's just that goth aesthetic, man. Like, I want that to come back. Well, it's like, did you, did you, did you, when I, when I talked about this, I said the movie needs to be dirtier. The remake yeah. needs to be dirtier. There's just something dirty and unkempt about the original. Yeah. A lot because it was shot on film, a lot because it just took place in the 90s. Yeah. And it needs to capture that and it doesn't. The, mm -hmm. the trailer for the new one, it just is too clean. It looks too actiony. It's too aesthetic. It's too clean. It's, yeah, it's got too much. The action is too manufactured. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're well, still going to see it when it comes out, but it's, I don't have high hopes for that one. That is for sure. All right, let's go ahead and move on then, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, I read this article. I thought this was really, really interesting. So apparently guys, Gen Z is now considered the loneliest generation. 60% of Gen Z says that they are lonely. Would that, would you buy that? Oh, yeah. Did yeah, you buy that? Sure. I mean, the yeah. first thing I thought when I saw it was like, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. So this is what it says. Uh, with remote work and social media dominating so much of our lives these days, the impact on this, generation, uh, on this generation's mental health and relationships is starting to be seen more clearly. I would argue that you could actually make that argument, too, that the pandemic did that for a lot of... Uh, it the, didn't help. It didn't help mm -hmm. for them. Uh, this is especially true of Gen Z adults, where a new report found that 60% of adults between the ages of 18 and 24 report feelings of loneliness. But it's not just young adults. More broadly, the study found that 40% of all adults regularly go at least three days without a meaningful face-to-face -face interaction at all. Mm -hmm. I buy that. 110%. Yeah. yeah. I like, need to, like, when I'm at, like, when I'm not doing stuff here... Like there, there would be no reason or no, no, there'd be no problem with me going multiple days without seeing Same. someone else. Well, yeah. if I, or especially like when I'm, when, in, when I was living exclusively in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. that was part of the reason why I was like, you know, I should go down there. Cause like I was like, the band wasn't doing anything cause of like COVID and stuff. And, and we were trying to get a, a record written and stuff. And I was like, all I'm doing is sitting around on my butt doing nothing. I'm never hanging out with anybody, you know? So, I mean, that was, there's a lot of reasons to come down here and, 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 you know, for the time that I am, but like, it's very normal. I think for people to have become so used to using the internet to interact with people, they don't do a face to face interaction for, you know, days at a time. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm the same way. Like I can go days, with, but it's never really bothered me. I've kind of always been that way. I'm more same. insular. Same. Like that's just the way I am. I mean, I chose to move, move to uh, kind of the woods yeah. where I have that kind of option of, of, of being yeah. isolated if I want. But. Does it bother you going like days? With, like I mean, you're married, so it's a little bit different. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a little different. Um, back when I was at home in California, not really because I had all my friends and family around. So like yeah. I knew they were close by. It kind of it sucked when we moved because I didn't know anybody out here. I just barely was meeting you guys here. Yeah. And, it you know, kind of like what I was talking about before the show, the winter blues. I was just man, that was a rough time. So yeah, year. as somebody from California and you've ju you're just realizing what it's like to live somewhere with seasons <sighs> and that yeah. uh, sitting when it's, it gets dark really soon. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah, freezing. It zaps your, well, I mean, you know, everyone's definition of freezing is different, but it zaps your desire no, to do anything. No, freezing is when water freezes. Freezing in the colloquial, <laughs> not freezing is in the, when the water actually freezes. <laughs> this is my truth. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 32 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. That's it. I love when you have to explain to people. I was watching some show the other day where they're explaining to you like, um, like, oh, it was really cold. I thought it was going to snow. And then you have to, if you're from the Midwest, you have to explain that it doesn't snow when it's really cold. It actually mm -hmm. snows when you're yeah. closer to 30 degrees and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It says... But even in social settings, people are having a hard time. 28% reported feeling lonely while attending a social event and a quarter feel isolated in their workplace. I remember when everybody was getting mad, especially Gen Z was getting mad when work start, when, when businesses started going back away from remote work mm -hmm. and telling them that they had to come back to the office. This was a very big thing at Disney mm -hmm. when they're like, Bob Iger got back after Bob Chapin. He's like, all right, guys, you got to come back into the mm -hmm. office. And... To them, it makes sense. A lot of people were saying that for like a company like Disney, when they were trying to make animated movies, distance work was like damaging to the creative process. Yes. It's very hard. Even if your job uh, can be done at home, it doesn't mean that the collaboration with fellow employees would work. 100%. So mm -hmm. I'm just finished writing a record and a lot of it was done remotely. Um, I decided that I didn't want to do the lyrics like that. Yeah. So I went to L.A., and I worked with a lot of producer to get um, to get that stuff stuff done. And it is we can knock out me and him can knock out a song in a day. 
wow. no problem. Write a whole song, get everything, get all the ideas done, and then maybe I'll track some of it. Mm -hmm. because sometimes we'll track as we're coming up with ideas. Yeah. Sometimes I'll track, you know, get, or, or sometimes I'll just demo it. Sometimes if I get, like, if it's something that I, that I feel good about, it'd be like, all right, those are good, you know? Um, but when, when I'm there with our, with Josh Wilbur, our producer, it, I can, we can knock a lot of stuff out real fast. If I'm trying to send ideas back and forth, you know, you send it, then, uh, you know, what's he doing? Is he, in front of the computer or is he in the house or is he at the studio am i driving somewhere when i get an idea can i listen to the new mix right now or do i have to wait until yeah. you know it's like all that stuff matters all that kind of stuff happens and additionally you see that when it comes to like writing music and stuff like that it's if you can do it all yourself it's fine but if you're trying yeah. to collaborate collaborating over email is difficult and it take there is a learning curve um, and I can understand why companies are like, we want to bring people here. You could tell like in music when bands will write stuff remote mm -hmm. and they come together later on, like uh, just off the top of my head, Blink-182 Neighborhoods, it's a good album. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't, I didn't like it at first, but yeah, you could definitely feel it just, they don't feel as connected yeah. as they do on other albums. Uh, on the social level, I think part of it is that phones these days are just making people lonely. You're yeah. connected with all of these people, but you're not actually connecting with them because digital, digital communication and digital togetherness is not the same thing as physically experiencing it in the real world in a lot of ways yeah. uh, and a lack of community and shared beliefs like I imagine for a lot of them like we talk a lot about the polarization of society people are pulling away from religion getting away from all these things and I think back in the day when you had things like that that comforted you it was a lot easier to go through bouts of loneliness right I was looking at this article where I was taught they were talking about Gen Z in the workforce and they're like why would I want to go work for a corporation just to make this billionaire more money I'm like literally to get out of your house yeah. because you'll be suicidal if you don't but I was, I was like, back in the day, I was like, well, it was also because you had a family and you had to sure. pay for your, you know, your kids to have clothes and food and stuff like that. But for a lot of it, it's like, look, the internet is great, but it's not a substitute for real world co connection at the macro level, right? Like yeah. you have to get out sometimes, yeah. otherwise you're going to be depressed. And even here they're talking about how basically, I love this one, this, this completely arbitrary uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy, the U.S. Surgeon General, reported that loneliness is as deadly, apparently, as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. How the hell did you come up with that number? I don't buy it at yeah. all. Uh, if it was... Uh, it just makes me want to smoke more. <laughs> they're saying, they're saying, why is everyone lonely? There's, they're claiming that people apparently still believe that there's a stigma around talking about it. I don't know if I believe that in this day and age, in the in the age no, where God everyone no. talks about mental health. There is no stigma. It's just that if you say there is a stigma, then yeah. people will give you more attention. Yeah. Yes. It says, if everyone's feeling lonely, why aren't they changing that? Part of the problem stems from the hesitation to even talk about it. Only 14% of respondents said they often talk to others about their lonely feelings, while 62% Two percent believe there is still a stigma around the issue. I don't know if I buy that. That's still a thing in this day and age. No. Uh, there's a twenty dollars super chat here from a twenty-seven dollar and ninety-nine cents in Canadian. Very pleasant and in, in kind money, apparently. Very polite money from Dave Gazuli says, Ah, Phil, you sweet summer child, you should take a trip to northern Canada in January. Thirty-two is t-shirt weather. Negative sixty is freezing. Love you guys. Uh, listen, I mean, I I understand that there are places that are colder. <laughs> he was being he was being specific and I was ragging on him for being specific while I was being uh, facetious general, yes. yes more general uh, I, I just thought this was interesting because to me like when we talk when Mary like when Mary's here and we talk about Gen Z a lot of it is it's prevailing feels of loneliness and a lot of it comes back to kind of a, a haphazard like despair about the future of the country mm -hmm. and Millennials certainly feel that too with Millennials it tends to be about home ownership and stuff like that and the fact that they're never going to own a home and things like that a lot of the things that so, so there's no there is not a significant problem if you're dealing with poverty on an absolute level right yeah. so if your society is poor people don't worry about money it's when you have wealth inequality wealth inequality yep. so like most of the problems that gen z is expressing really are about the inequality because yes. very few, like very, very few people are actually hungry. There are people that are going to make TikToks, sure, because it gets them attention. There are people that are going to say things that get them attention. There are people that are hypochondriacs and, and dramatic and blah, blah, blah. Yes, but actual hunger actual people that don't have a place a lot of people are homeless in their car because they 
feel like they don't want to deal with their parents and they'll yeah. go ahead and you know they, they'll if they really wanted to go home they could you know yeah. if they really yeah. wanted to it's place, always like, easier when you when you have something to fall back yeah on exactly it's easy know? to go ahead yeah. and live in your car for two three weeks a month when you have your phone and everything still works and and then you know you, you straighten whatever and it's not again it's not everybody there are people that are actually hard on, on their you know that are in, in really rough spots but there's a lot of people that are out there using the internet for a reason to get attention get people to feel bad for them possibly get you know financial support or whatever um when they don't have real problems they have first world problems what's uh, what's funny is there was a show in the early 2000s called dark angel which is uh, oh, it was yeah. jessica alba's like first big role mm -hmm. james cameron show and it's about seattle after an emp attack essentially destroys society and what they're talking about it and is they're saying like look uh, there is a lot of talk about class warfare in there because the guy that she's working with in the show, he's actually like somebody who's born into money, who's also a vigilante, like uh, like freedom, like he wants to, to disclose all the information and all the evil people in society. So he's, he's a, the evil people. He's the evil people, but he's also a good guy, right? He, of course, there's a shot of him wearing sure. a Che Guevara shirt because that's oh, how you God. that's how you showed a rebel back in the 2000s. But the point is, there's a scene at the very beginning where she's biking through a sense ostensibly a, a tent town. And she says, I don't get why they call it depression. Yeah, everyone's broke, but nobody's really all that depressed because they were all around, you know, at that time, there was shared environment where everybody was coming together under hard times mm -hmm. to deal with it together, yep. shared community. And that's just something that I feel like phones separate you from that because digital communities just aren't the same. There was this thing about Gen Z, go, Gen Zers ghosting employers, which I just, I got a huge kick out of. Uh, it says, a recent survey from the employment website found that 75% of 1,500 UK workers polled have ignored a prospective employer in the last 12 months. Uh, Gen Z reported the worst behavior once applied an astonishing 93% of Gen Zers confessed to not showing up for an interview and 87% saying they didn't even bother coming to the first day of work. God. I experienced that. Did you? At my old job. Yeah, you just have young people like get the job, not show up, just completely leave. It was so weird to me. Yeah. Uh, Gen Z's audacity to ghost potential employers comes as many employees admit to being too scared to take a lunch or vacation days for fear of being fired or laid off, which is why I'm working on getting somebody to like help me do this job so I can take a day off every mm -hmm. once in a while. Uh, as, uh, as such, older generations acknowledge that ghosting in the workplace just less often and with regrets. Millennials are the most likely to feel anxious about ghosting and worry that it will negatively affect future job opportunities. Yep. But Gen Zers who ghosted their potential employers, especially on the first day, confessed that they did so to feel in charge of their career. So it's literally skip work to establish dominance. <laughs> Can't relate. Uh, I, it, it makes no sense to no. me. Uh, but I, I, this is the even funnier part is the end of this article. It's clear that the financial offer is the biggest carrot for employers to try and attract talent with pay benefits and other factors that support rising cost of living likely to prevent a job seeker from ghosting. Of course, if you pay them more, they'll show up. Sure. Of course, not all businesses will be in the position to offer that, but being transparent about financial packages from the outset is likely to prevent job seekers from ghosting further along the higher process yeah you don't want to hear that like you could make up to this much and then not make that much but this is the best part young adults in the job hunt say that they are being forced to reject roles because they can't afford the expenses associated with starting the job like wardrobe upgrade and transportation transportation makes sense wardrobe upgrade i don't know look you hard. can you can find clothes that are acceptable to wear to work to yep. start out at walmart for very inexpensive you want right? to hear that is again yes. this is a this is a problem not this is not a problem about absolute poverty this is i want to wear nice things to work i want to wear things that other people on instagram are are advertising that i see people making youtube videos about and stuff that's all that it is you want to hear what the deal breakers were for gen z at the in the workplace sure uh here are the deal breakers a high ratio of white cis men. Oh, oh God. Shut set, up. Racism. Just straight up racism. Set days, requ uh, set days required in the office and not getting their own office. Unbelievable. They're terrorists. <laughs> they're terrorists. No, well, they're, they're, they're literally making sure that AI and auto, that automation is yeah. going to take their job. And you, you talk to, you hear people talk about the, the fact that there are so many socialists and, and, and stuff like that in, in the, uh, in Gen Z and stuff like that. The ones that are, are on like with 
without fail. They're the lazy ones that want the fully automated luxury space communism. This was That's the... what they're thinking. They're not thinking workers are going to get out there and work for, for fair wages and blah, blah, blah. They're literally thinking, I don't want to work at all. We're at the point where we can, everything should be automated. If the stupid corporations just got off their butt and finished making the machines that are going to work and do everything for us, then we wouldn't have to go to work. That's the attitude. Yeah. And it's insane, but that's the attitude. The, uh, the, the funny thing is, is, um, oh, we got a $20 one here from Demo it says, boys, 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 boys stoked boys, for boys. the new album, Phil, get the Cheers, black man. trucker jacket from blue owl workshop because, uh, become a, what is it? A denim head jump down the rabbit hole. I, I, you I like, like, you are a denim. Head. I do. I, yeah, I mean, I have some, some, uh, I have some nice salvage jeans on right now, but I'm not getting the trucker jacket yet. I Why might, not? I might just kind of, I'm, I might wait until the fall because it's summer coming, you know? I just uh, I, I look at all this stuff and I, I just laugh because for for the for the workplace I was always I never wanted to to miss work I never no liked I never did work unless I like oh like, you don't get I, paid when I yeah. would uh, well yeah that's the thing right like yeah. I was uh, I was not like most of my jobs I wasn't salary so if I didn't work mm -hmm. I didn't get paid mm -hmm. yep. and that's a problem when you're trying to make rent yeah mm -hmm. stuff like that so sorry guys uh, we can't help how many white dudes are hired at a job so. I, it it does. It really impresses me that just straight up racism yeah. is, is is why like straight up I don't like white guys. Uh, I okay. mean, I, I mean, technically, if, the, if this was in Scotland, they should be punished. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> God, unreal. Uh, oh, oh, the other thing I was gonna say is like this was this was showing up in Hollywood too. So there was all these things coming out on Film Thread about these people that were getting jobs in the industry that were you know diversity hires talking about like I've been working here for two years why am I not a showrunner already well a showrunner has 20 years experience in the business Unreal. Unreal. right they're, they're not something you don't just show up one day and get put in charge of a multi-million dollar show this is another problem with the with, with a, a society that's not merit based they think that merit is irrelevant mm -hmm. so they think that anyone can do any job just Put a person there and the job will get done. The person doing it, they behave as if that doesn't matter. And that is not the way the world works. That is that is not the way the wor world works at all. Like, there are people that think whoever was in Churchill's position would have been Churchill. And that is not the truth at all. Not Like, whoever was in Hitler's place was not going to be Hitler. Like, that's just not the case. Yeah. So, it's a ridiculous idea. And it should be left in the dustbin of history. All right. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do some more super chats here. We got the $20 one. Phil, when we're, when we're, it's really funny when we're looking at the screen here on the smaller screen, it looks like the loading logo. Like your shirt is like, your shirt oh, is yeah. Loading logo right there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's see. Where do we leave off there? Mikey, we were at Corey Anderson says, Jojo Siwa needs a good, ch uh, I'm not reading uh, <laughs> a, a good, uh, I'll say chicken cider. Bet she would be normal afterwards. Hashtag Mary wouldn't read this. Well, I didn't either. I just substituted one of the words. Keep it at least mildly P, uh, PG uh, friendly today. Shane H. Wilder says, uh, Jono looks like Kiss hot drunk and had a baby with TikTok influencers uh, and then was promptly dropped on her head. <laughs> I think Jono is supposed to be Jojo. Yeah. Um, and yes, I guess is that supposed to be, is that Gene Simmons? She she kind of looks Gene like Simmons? it, yeah. Okay. Jeffrey Bird says Jojo looks like Stardust, not his older brother. <laughs> I, I argued that Jojo looked like the Blue Meanie the other day. Look up a picture of the Blue Meanie. That's who I thought she looked like. Uh, Ardvar219 says, Phil, the band getting a Weird Al parody uh, and or VH1 behind the music episode? Rock I would on. love a Weird Al parody. What, what song would you have? Weird Anything Al that Weird, Wa Weird Al would, would want to do of All That Remains stuff, be my guest, please. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, do, you have, do you have a favorite Weird Al parody? Well, I mean, there is something to be said for Gangster's Par uh, Amish Paradise just because it irritated Coolio. Yes. And he still did it. So there's, that's kind of cool. Um, and he, I think it was really, perform uh, really performed well. Um, Tacky's great. I mean, even some of the old stuff, like I thought Nature Trail to Hell was great off of, off of uh, Weird Al in 3D. Like, I've been a Weird Al fan for like, yeah. since I was a kid. So I love a ton of Weird Al stuff. So. Stuck in the closet with Vanna White. <laughs> um, as an old one, Party in the CIA yep. is incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, there, there yeah. needed to be a music video for Party in God. the CIA. He's so great. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. So good. All right, let's hold off on the rest and we'll come back after the fact. You guys are gamers, so you guys are going to have something to say about this. 
apparently, guys, just like with the Sweet Baby Ink situation where they created a Steam, uh, a Steam curation group so that you could figure out which games have uh, Sweet Baby Ink affiliated with it to prevent you from going to get them, uh, a group called Melanin Gamers has developed the first ever rating system going the opposite way to help you identify toxicity in online gaming. Melanin Gamers uh, and so, and, uh, have launched the first rating system identifying online gaming toxicity. Please check out the rating systems for yourself. I checked out the website. So I, I just want to know what you guys think. As, as gamers yourself, I would imagine that this would have kind of a Streisand effect, that it would go the other way, that people are like, oh, look at all the toxicity in this game. Count me in. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah. Now I know what to buy. Look, yeah. Pete, listen, and to, like, people got GTA mm -hmm. sometimes specifically so they could just, like, cause mayhem and have the cops come after him yeah. just so that way they could go pick up the hooker take her behind the building <laughs> do the deed yeah. then beat her up with a baseball bat and take your money back like that yeah. was a that was a selling feature you yeah. don't think that they're gonna go ahead and be like whoa the the toxic games those are the ones i want of course they're gonna like he that's great. People haven't changed that much. No, no. Like people no. haven't changed that much. Just because the online chatter has changed yeah. does not mean that people have actually changed no, that much. No, no. And, and you can go into any Call of Duty chat lobby still and hear all the same kind of toxicity that, that, that they're going to complain about. You know? I actually can't play the trailer because of all the No, language. you probably shouldn't. <laughs> I can't. Lots of, lots of uh, gamer, words. gamer words that I can't say on here that, that just probably, you know, would... It's culture, man. Like gamers the last, being gamers. The la yeah. I don't even know what it is. Like the, the last four episodes of this show have all gotten demonetized. Wow. I don't know what. I, I mean, the, the Diddy stuff seemed to get us instantly demonetized, whatever. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, I couldn't figure out what it was about yesterday's episode. There was nothing that I felt was all that untoward in yesterday's episode that was actually supposed to get us, that was going to get us in trouble. We covered, so uh, like, so the episode got demonetized, right? Gordon Shumway's got a $20 oh. super chat. Uh, he said, uh, too many cis white men, that's racist, sexist, and heterophobic at the same time. It Congratulations, is? that's the trifecta of bigotry. Hell Change yeah. Change the race, gender, and sex sexuality of your statement, and you'll be crucified. Yep. Shaking my damn head. What's interesting, so... I posted the segments then, and the, the Diddy segment got demonetized, but the segment about uh, Rebel Wilson and Sasha Baron Cohen talking about sticking fingers up the... That didn't. That did not. So that okay. was okay to talk about, yeah. but apparently talking about Diddy being under investigation for child trafficking or sex trafficking, not, uh, not a problem. Okay. Or is a, is a problem, but... Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That that wasn't allowed. So the the toxic rating system, it's going to end up working the other way. And most of the other people here are saying that. Like, is this something that you would actually use to then go and find a game to play? Uh, you know, maybe. Honestly. Yeah. So uh, we can go look at their website here. It's really, really funny. Let me see if I can go full screen on this one. So it like lists the game. It says, each rating was created by surveying hundreds of gamers and represents the average amount of racism, gender discrimination, violence towards others, crude humor, and controlled substance conversation experienced while playing online. Can I sign up to review these? That you should. I mean, that's a dream job, honestly. So here, let's go through some. 78% of people experiencing toxicity playing Call of Duty online. Well, you yep. know, they literally said that they were talking about violence as part of the toxicity. The whole point of the game is to kill the other guys. Mm -hmm. Call in airstrikes and blow up the, their bodies. Like, yeah. it's awesome when you see, like, pieces flying around. Yeah. I don't, they don't do that, I don't think, in Call of Duty. But when video games do, it's cool. Like, yeah. So this one says, says racism, 75%. Gender discrimination, 67%. Those are rookie numbers. Got to get those numbers. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Direct violence threats, 90%. That should be a, a staple for the game yes. itself. That makes yes. no sense. Sexual content, 74%. You know, I can, I can understand why you would have, be like, we don't need sexual content in Call of Duty. Call I of get Duty. that, yeah. you know? Uh, well, I mean, I think they're probably just talking about the the lobby here, right? The people talking about it online. They're talking about the online discourse. Oh, the okay. Game. Well, that that could be. Yeah, call yeah, because Call of Duty Online, so it's the people. So then, talking. so then, all the stuff they're talking about is actually just human beings yes. acting like human beings. Yep. Uh, crude humor, seventy nine percent. Controlled substance conversation, eighty two percent. I love this graph on the right, which I have no idea what this is supposed to actually mean. That's the aiming thing. So on Call of Duty, you can you can oh, adjust your 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 gun to have like okay. 
certain attributes that are stronger and weaker, so they just oh, took so it's, that. It's literally just a. It's it's a okay. mock up of something okay. that they. Well, they're do. using it for all of the games, though. Yeah, Not to, which okay, is. So. Stupid, but yeah. Fortnite. Seventy-six percent of the on of people say that the game has toxicity. Okay. Yes, thank you guys yes. so much for that. It's it's always such a. It's, how do you even have any of this in Minecraft? I th- well, I mean, because everything happens in Minecraft. Yes. <laughs> 50%. Listen, you know that everything happens in Minecraft. Like, the Holocaust happened in Minecraft. That's true. That's true. Know? 56% racism, 54% gender discrimination, 78% direct violent threats, sexual content at 64% on Minecraft, of all things. They should do The Sims. I, w- I bet you the numbers oh God, would be yeah. very low on The Sims. Yeah. Um, and they go through this stuff, and I just, I laugh because I look at all these things and it's like no matter how much things change they stay the same things haven't really changed at all from the 90s when everybody was fear-mongering about violence in video games saying that Mm -hmm. it caused violence in the real world Mm -hmm. which is how they you know whenever these things come up it's always done in a way to get more they they want to get government legislation involved in this stuff which they're doing right now with the adl Mm mm-hmm and stuff like that and it's always so disingenuous because to pretend like the video games would somehow cause violence without massive failings at every other level of your upbringing is at the least Mm -hmm. like uh, intellectually dishonest and at worst manipulative right well manipulative is the intent yeah you know unfortunately yeah I just uh, I, I look at something like this and all that would want to do it's like it's like a kid seeing like an R-rated mo- movie logo and being like I don't want to go see that that movie's rated R they want to see the rated R movie of course that's what I wanted right nobody wanted PG-13 Deadpool they wanted to see R-rated Deadpool that's the whole point oh I forgot about that yeah yeah that sucked because original well they did they, they released Deadpool 2 in the theaters over Christmas as yeah. like a, a PG-13 cut mm-hmm. that gets rid of all the good stuff <laughs> The whole point of seeing the movie is to see the, you know, mm-hmm. the, is to hear the swearing and to see the violence and the nudity. That is all, Deadpool. That is the point yeah. of all of these things. So I just laugh because it doesn't matter how much you try, you can't get rid of the people who want to jump into your culture and use authoritarian measures to change it. And something like that, this just feels like the people who want to create the nanny state that prevent. I guess you can make the argument like they want to make it so that you have you can make an informed decision. But nobody who's using this website unless they're using it ironic unless they're using it ironically but nobody using this website probably wants to play these games anyways yeah so yeah it made me laugh i thought i thought you guys would get a kick out of this i'm sure the people in the chat would love to go check out this site i mean i'm uh, sure they I'm are gonna right. yeah. <laughs> all right uh let's go and finish up these super chats guys and then we will just hang out until five so let's get back to where we were up at the top uh, we were left off at oh i think we're left off at jacob um, yeah, Jacob Parody says, for those in Wisconsin, New York, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, go out and vote. Yes for the two, uh, yes for the two referendum questions. No, uh, no more Zuck, Zuckerbucks. What are Zuckerbucks? Zuckerbucks. Zucker, uh, that, uh, I, I assume that's money from Facebook okay. or yeah. or money to Facebook. I'm gonna try this again. For those in Wisconsin, New York, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, go out and vote. Yes for the two referendum questions. No more Zuckerbucks, and we need our election officials to be legit. So go out and vote, guys. That's yeah, what saying. you should go out and vote. I agree. Corey Anderson says, I use Facebook to keep in contact with family and to coordinate with the with the chief's mess. Networking is an important tool and Facebook facilitates that. This is true, but you also have to do, if you do that, you also have to, you know, bear in mind whatever information you give to Facebook, you're giving to Zuckerberg and he's going to make a profit off of it I'm in the whatever worst, way that he can. I am the worst networker on planet Earth. I am. I'm going to leave this job with exactly as many contacts as I can. <laughs> that, no, I'm, I'm not even kidding you. Like the amount of yeah. people that come here that would be good people to know is just massive. And I just first, I'm just always, I, I just never meet them. I never like they're like downstairs. I get done with work usually right around the time they're going up for IRL. So unless I'm, I do an episode, I usually don't get a chance. Plus you walk downstairs, everyone's engaged in conversation. Who are you supposed to interrupt and just interject yourself into? I can't do that. That's my worst part. That's I worst. hate interjecting I hate myself. Yeah. It's like, hey, people allow me to join this debate or this yeah. discussion yeah. really awkwardly. Just take notes from Chuck. 
He's good, but he's he's a people person. He is. He's a people person. Pat the Plumber says, how dare you demonetize PCC? Rumble wouldn't do that. Yes, but we would have like half of the audience on Rumble. We would. Yeah, well, I mean, Rumble's still a small site, so yeah. I need to be able to simulcast. I want to be able to put the show on Twitter too. Yeah, I saw yeah, that people dude. are doing, uh, like Shane Davis was doing like his shows like on both Twitter and on YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, there's people that do a t like on YouTube, Twitter. I think they, the people do it on Kick and people do it on uh, people stream on Twitch at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. I personally, I think that you guys should stream on every platform that you can. I gotta figure out how to simulcast with OBS because I think a lot of people do it with Streamyard, which is different than, uh, than mm. what we use. So, all right, Corey Anderson says. For those in, oh no, so I'm sorry. I use Facebook to keep in contact with family and to coordinate. Oh, I, I, we did that one. Sorry, Corey. Thank you for that one. I'm, I too am. Uh, I have to admit, I am a horrible. Uh, I am a horrible networker. Not that John Stewart says everybody and their brother still smoked back then. I don't know at what point they're talking about when, but a lot of people used to smoke on a regular basis. Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Francisco Sanchez Jr. says, let's hear it for the boys. Boys, 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 That is true, my friend. Shane H. Wilder says, cringe of the day. I threw up in my mouth a little bit. How many Gorlocks could fit in a Lizzo? That's a... Do they have, like, their own independent... Two and a third. You know, gravity? One and a third. I don't know. I don't know that I believe that you'd have multiples. They're both large. I saw uh, like a, a picture today. It was a it was a picture of like the modern day cruise ship next to the Titanic. It shows you how small oh God, the Titanic was next to modern day. Titanic. Yeah. Somebody could maybe do like the the side by side comparison. I'm gonna do it. You should do it. I'll figure it out. But you gotta you gotta actually get the actual sizes though. So like you get ha you can't be like you can't, you like, can't have like a gigantic it. Lizzo and then yeah. a little you know or vice versa. It's gotta be they gotta be because I'm I have a I have a sinking suspicion that. Uh, or sneaking suspicion that uh, they're about the same. Well, it was a Titanic, Probably, so yeah. it was a sinking suspicion. That one, yeah. Um, <laughs> Corey Anderson says, imagine Shakira... Whatever. Imagine Shakira riding you, moving her hips the way she does. Woo! He said it, not me. They don't lie. They don't lie. I read it. There you have it. <laughs> well, that's right. in the world. Listen, listen, horny guy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. Or where did I leave off? I got to get back up here after I after going through that one. There's more here than I thought. <laughs> um, Wait a minute. Okay, here we go. Tacti Platy says, uh, "Phil, my great grandpa was shot and lived in a work uh, in a worker uprising in Central America uh, by one of his workers. I was taught young the evils of communism." That is pretty dramatic, and that sucks. But I and I hope that he survived. Because did he say that he survived, or did he not? Because <laughs> you kind of leave me hanging here. Uh, he kind of left us hanging. Yeah, I hope he. I hope that he made it. Uh, it sucks if he didn't. And uh, yeah, commies are awful. Yep. Uh, Corey Anderson says, "Question for the panel: Y'all think you could take Mary in a fight?" Absolutely. I mean, I'm a guy, so yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. God, mean, I want to. We, we know the my violence. That <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That was <laughs> The way he just said it, dude. <laughs> I can't hear I'm out of my I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear what he said because your laugh literally destroyed my one working. That caught me so off guard. <laughs> what did he say? I said, oh my god, I wanna. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Mary Phil fight. <laughs> 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 All right. Ow. Okay, my ear. I'm just kidding. I don't want to fight. Ringing. <laughs> ringing. <laughs> ringing in my ear. We're good. I'm We're sorry. Good. <laughs> All right. Pat the Plumber says pudding culture crisis. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder says, I think if people knew then what they know now, the Patriot Act would have failed. As a millennial, I can still remember greeting people at the gate. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I do think that... Uh, I think if people understood now what it, the implications, they they might it might have failed. But also, again, right after nine eleven, it was weird. Like the world was different. Yeah. Like I real see, different. Um, I see. So I watch. I love watching these old TV shows that existed during that, that came that were on air before nine eleven and came, and stayed on air mm -hmm. after nine eleven and seeing the change in yeah. tone in yeah. a lot of them, it's very yeah. very interesting. Uh, DC and C says, do turfs stop at trans because they don't want to give men's rights? Give men rights. 
Uh, no, it's well. So the turfs do look at trans women, and they say that is men invading women's spaces, and and there is substance to that argument. So it it is because they don't want to give men women's rights, but that's not that's not the fundamental part of it, right? It's like this is where the revolution stops, and that does matter because according to leftism, it always needs to progress, and there are people that are called gender abolition abolitionists that want to abolish the concept of gender. So there there is no man, there is no woman. They think that society in the future should abolish that totally, and that is clearly something that feminists are definitely not okay with. They embrace their womanhood, even if it is not a particularly feminine <laughs> kind of womanhood and even though like feminism is kind of like women like cosplaying as men is kind of the deal of it right so i mean the the ideas that feminism holds high are when women do things that are historically men things you know doing doing things that are at least good things you know n none of them want to go and like work on oil platforms or anything but um like that's what it is so it's not that it's not really about men it's more about women but that that's functionally what happened yeah. all right the rumbling <clears throat> says can we cringe uh can we cringe everyone with ayahuasca chicks singing the people's joker <laughs> pretty uh, Wait, since, what? The, since the people's uh -huh. joker is pretty much done they, oh, they want to play that... the ayahuasca girl because of the mm. you know the... i mean i that uh, that sucks too yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I didn't find that. Look, I just found that kind of nerd. Like, I didn't, I didn't get the vis, like the visceral cringe off that chick that everybody did. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, Ugh. she just looks like a hippie. Ch like, like she's, she looks like she's, um, she, like she's stolen hippie culture from a bunch of actual. It's hippies. just like I was saying earlier. It's like everything is an exaggeration. Exactly, she's an exaggeration yes. of what a hippie is. There's not like, there's not like, oh, I like the hippie shirt and the hippie hairdo. It's all the piercings, all the tattoo, all the, you know, ever the whole nine yards on 10 all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's, that's so. what it looked like to me. Uh, Tacti Platy says, I remember Bert first experience, uh, first experience zero degrees Fahrenheit in the snowy yeah, roads. Yeah, dude. I never, I walked outside my house. I breathed in and I'm like, ow, that hurts. <laughs> What's going on? I've made a mistake. Yeah. I need to go home. You're like, Tim, can I work remote? I need to go. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. High Voltage 75 says, what's the coldest temperature you remember experiencing in Minnesota? I don't know. Really, really cold. Hmm. Well, 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 well yeah. below zero. And well, 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 well below zero in the wind chill. Because remember, guys, it's not the temperature that gets you. It's the wind chill. Oh, yeah. That's a Midwest that saying. That sucks. Along with, it's not the heat that gets you. It's the humidity. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the real bad stuff. Uh, I mean, for me, it was it was interesting because I liked uh, look as uh, uh, these guys are cool with the with the weather in here, but everybody always complains that it's too cold in here because I need the air conditioning on really really cold because I just prefer it colder, right? Like I don't like super warm weather. If I could live in one temperature all year round, it would be fifty five to sixty degrees year round. I wouldn't, but most of the time there is a woman that's small and cold too. Yeah, yes. Like most of the people that are complaining are like they're you know smaller and. Usually Wesley was complaining cold. the other day. Wesley, Wesley needs to eat sandwiches. There Wesley is very thin. <laughs> yes. Put some weight on, yeah. buckaroo. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Warmaniac209 says, socialists buck? Question mark. You said socialist bucks? Ain't no politeness in socialism. Never say the Canadian money is kind. Oh, because I called the... I, I, I said Dave Gazzulli's money was very polite. Nah. It is. It's Canadian money. It's much more polite. Uh, Shane H. Wilder says, IRL over FaceTime over phone call over text. I, I okay. He'd know. rather see you yeah. in real life more than FaceTime. Which in face oh, all right. Yes, okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Corey Anderson says, I just downloaded Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm not familiar with the franchise. Is it any good? Dragon's Dogma? Yep, that's what he I said. I have not played it. I, mean, uh, no I saw no people idea. talking about it, so... No clue. All right. DC and C says toxicity rating is just awesome rating. I agree. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, mean, look, kids wanted to go see the R rated movies for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. That's the whole point. Uh, High Voltage 75 says Phil on Gamer Maids. When? Uh, you should do that. When is Gamer Maids? They're on after us. Day. After, I'm, like they're on Monday through Friday at 5 to 7. You should do that at least yeah. once. I think they're doing Resident Evil 2 today. Yeah. 
Hmm. I like I to troll know. the chat. You show up there and just talk shit? It's great, because I tell them what to do, and then they don't try it, and then they die, and I'm like, hi, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Shane H. Wilder says, uh, I, I want to see their review of Doom, a devout Catholic ba blasting the demons in, hold on, in BFG. I just keep doing this. Okay. That would lose their minds because dogma, because because Doom guy is persecuting them. I don't know what he's talking about. So here. Doom, you Doom, are. Is in the game? You're, you're slaughtering demons. Okay, in the game, Doom. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Never watch the Doom movie. It's awful. It's actually a lot of fun to watch back. It's one of The Rock's worst roles. It's really, really bad. Uh, Mikey says, Restream is pretty decent in what I use. You just set it up like you do YouTube. Okay, so are you saying, Mikey, that I could use Restream to also simultaneously go on both Twitter and on YouTube? That'd be good. Not that John Stewart says, when making comparisons to Gen X and millennials aging, uh, smoking ages people. <laughs> Well, I mean, it does, yeah. but it's also awesome. Yep. Corey Anderson <laughs> says, Brett, I am sorry for some of my super chats. I type the first thing that comes to my head during the segments. I appreciate it, man. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, Tacti Platy says, yes, Phil, grandpa lived, forgave worker. Uh, uh, I don't know what that's. It's wow. Like, forgave him? Forgave him. Good on him, man. I don't know that I could do that. I don't know that I'm that, that big of a man. I would be effing PO'd. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would be really mad. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys, before we go, would you hit the like button on this video, please? And subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Thank you very much for that. All right, Berman, thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm a writer at Scanner News. Go to Again, what the hell is that? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You have no idea how many times I've heard people like, what is that? I'm like, just... I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Just keep uh, telling them. It takes a long time to get it through people's thick skulls. Yeah. So go to Scanner News, check out all our articles, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Man of Burt. Thank you. All right, Phil. I am Phil the Remains official. Uh, no, wait, hold on. Let me try that again. I'm Phil the Remains on Twix. I'm Phil the Remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, YouTube, you know. The internet and don't forget the left lane is for crime correct shane h wilder says to clarify in doom doom guy is canonically a celibate catholic and the bfg is the big effing gun oh and bertman is ha gay <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> perfect all right it. guys if you would like to follow me instagram and twix at brett dasovic on both of those platforms pcc is here five days a week guys monday through friday 3 p.m eastern standard time Noon Pacific, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify, if you would prefer to listen rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix, at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook, and not TikTok, because we were banned on TikTok, at PopCultureCrisis, and on Instagram, at PopCultureCrisisPod. Guys, we will be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Later. Bye.